There are thousands of airstrips that are dirt, grass, and mud across the United States, Canada, and the world. Many of these are inaccessible to normal aircraft. There's a certain breed of pilot who wants people to land anywhere, either for sport or by pure necessity. They're bush pilots. We practice these skills so we can be safe off airport, so we can get into and out of the tight spots, the backcountry, and the unimproved fields. You'll now watch some of the best pilots in the world show you what they can do with as little as 50 feet. Not only can they take off a land off airport, they can take off a land anywhere. This is the National Stoll Series. Welcome, everyone. It's time for the National Stole Series at Outlaw Stole 2023. We're just about cleared for takeoff here at Somerton Airport 54, Alpha Zulu on your sectional. Right against the U.S. and Mexico border, we're underneath the Marine Corps Air Station Yuma airspace today, and we'll be landing in the shadows of their F-35 stealth fighters. Competitors today will be launching off of runway 1735. It's 3,000 feet long and 60 feet wide, and yes, that's right, it's a hard service runway. National stole pilots are used to turf and dirt, so we'll see how that affects the stopping distances today. It's the second year for Outlaw National Stole. Last year, conditions were extremely favorable for low scores with howling winds. The forecast is less aggressive with the winds this year, but every plane will still be coated in a layer of dust. And, of course, every pilot will have to compete with the sweltering desert heat and high-density altitude. Last year, Steve Henry in Yeehaw 6 took off in an incredible six feet. This year, Hal Stockman coming to show us some new things in his RANS S. 7S in the Unlimited class. Another Stoll legend, CC Pocock. He's here in his Cessna 170B. Andrew Patry brought home gold last year. Can he do it again against Brandon Korn and Jeff Abrams, who are already ahead in season points from Swamp Stoll? Lastly, keep an eye on rookie Justin Tisdale against heavy competition in the sport class. A fun story to watch there indeed. Lots of newcomers here in Somerton, which means lots of excitement. Everyone is eager to get lots of points on the board, especially while some of the heavier hitters are napping. It's time for some desert flying action here at National Stoll's Outlaw Stoll. The pattern is clear. The line is painted. Let's kick things off. Wisconsin, so it's a little hot out for me. 90 degrees. He's 90 degrees today, uh, rookie move. It's the good thing it's practice. Don't have my mic turned on. I'm so pumped. That's the problem, Eric. I'm so pumped. You heard in the VO just then. I'm so excited. Getting a lot of echo in my, in my mic. We're fixing the echo. It's all good. So, uh, yeah, I'm so excited about it. Like I said, I'm sweating a bunch because I'm from Wisconsin. It's 90 degrees. It's breezy. It's 
dusty. My, my stuff here on the desk is already covered in sand, and I'm pumped about it because that's not the kind of flying you normally get ever for anybody, but certainly not in National Stoll. We've got a really exciting new, not a new layout, but we've got something in front of us people don't see very often. No, right now, guys, we're in the desert. This is not just any desert. It is the desert that is basically Mexico, about five, six miles north of Mexico right now. You can and see Mexico from here. It's <laughs> behind can. us. You can indeed. And the pilots, as you see here, lining up. The dust is flying. These gentlemen are preparing for the very first practice of the event. And this beautiful Outback 180 Satabria out of Southern California He's a, he's a newcomer. He's a rookie to our series, but he also just got his new Super Stole from Just Aircraft that was delivered this morning. So he's fired up to be flying anything he can be from helicopters to this beautiful black and red 180 horsepower rock and roll Satabria. My first actual solo in a GA aircraft was a pink and black Satabria. So I'm excited to see this guy come out looking a little more fashionable than I was back then. Love it. I mean, they were actually built those just on the road where I grew up. They build them now at American Champion Aircraft in Rochester, Wisconsin. They also have a factory in Burlington, Wisconsin. Uh, so, yeah, this is Steve Radenbaugh, race B66. His team name, The Radway. Maybe I'll just call him Steve Rad for short. Steve Radway, I like it. Yesterday, as he was here practicing before the practice, as all good pilots should, we had some wild moments that we'll be certainly highlighting for all of you on our YouTube. He came in, got a big bounce, didn't have the airspeed for the aileron to take the bite that he was looking for, and that wingtip was inches from the ground. And, of course, as soon as we said, hey, we got that on camera, the first thing he said was, can I watch? <laughs> can I see it? Can I learn from it? Can I improve? Yes. Absolutely. Excited to see him go get launched here in a minute as things get ready to kick off for practice today on Friday. Outlaw Stole here for National Stole. Really fun one out here in the Southwest, like you mentioned, Eric. And I think the most exciting part about this is we've got a new set of challenges for our pilots. Typically, pretty windy. Last year at Outlaw Stole, insanely windy. We saw Steve Henry take off in six feet. Uh... That was insane. Six uh, feet's pretty short. Six feet's pretty short. The other thing that happens is it's hot. Like, I keep complaining. Oh, I'm so hot. It's hot out. And that gives us high density altitude. For you at home, if you don't know what, if you're not a pilot or have been stu studying aeronautics, basically means that the airplane's got to work harder to get into the air. So it's harder for the pilots. It's going to extend their scores a little bit. They would like it to be really cold and windy. Cold and windy would be ideal, but here we are playing the hand we're dealt. We're seeing some interesting airplanes we've not seen operate on the East Coast yet as they're taxiing by us. Some ridiculously extended gear legs on race number 58 now. We're going to be very excited to see what kind of performance we can anticipate. Clearly, these guys are, are not going to be hopping to their airplane to fly to, to a Florida Stoll event. It's a daggum long way, even if they're flying commercial. <laughs> but the power is on. Steve Rad is on his way. November 669er Charlie Papa into that early rotation. Gets the keeps the right gear down a little longer than he wants. Needs to nose over, build that speed off the ground around the 180 foot mark. Wondering if yesterday you said he had that kind of uh, edgy, edgy type thing happen. Wondering if that's gonna you're gonna see that worked out today in practice for him. Rand's S7 now, black, white, and blue. Race. Zero two. Really authoritative. You notice that he had a lot of energy still in that airplane. He could have pulled easily 50 feet earlier. 15 feet earlier, I say. CeCe now lined up on the right side of the runway. He is focused on using this crosswind to every benefit he can. CeCe's known for his aggression. Powering across the runway. Goes for the early rotation. He's off the ground at under 125 feet. <laughs> CC is always a pleasure to watch. I mean, kind of a legend in his own right, right? Like, uh, you want to learn how to do this, you go to CC. He is definitely one of the top guys in the country to go and learn exactly how to fly Bush aircraft. CC's right here in Arizona. And I'm not sure which 170 he has because they both look the same. But one's experimental and one is not. Sport Cub on the roll. 100 horsepower. Yeah, these little sport cubs are exceptional. We saw Kelly Qualls last month at Swamp Stoll doing an exceptional job with that airplane, leading up the rookie class for Swamp Stoll. Now that number 58, this thing is 
gargantuan. I was really excited to hear that it's going to be here. This is a 2012 Stole King. Stole Very rare. King. And there's floating up a little bit of a dot, like let it let it settle back into the runway there briefly, but really exciting aircraft, purpose built stole aircraft, experimental. Experimental means you you build it at home. That's right. Well, I mean, or maybe at the airport, but probably in your garage for a while. Well, and the nice thing with these experimental aircraft is there's so much more latitude for different things that you can do, ways to repair it, parts you can choose. You don't have to have all FAA certified everything, unlike this beautiful <laughs> aircraft on approach right now. He's a bit fast. He's keeping it now, keeping it off the line, and it is going to be a scratch, but a nice, gentle one. Hard not to be gentle with those nice, big bush tires in the front of that thing. I love watching black airplanes as they taxi in the light. You watch the reflection popping. And with, <laughs> just created a, a little mini dust devil there in the, in the sand for us. He did indeed, but we've got our next contender that Rans S7 on approach now. Wind is very switchy now, pushing behind and cross. In our pilot briefing, we had a full-blown dust devil make itself known so that's Brian Moore. Brian Moore from Lancaster, California. He's a commercial rotorcraft pilot. 25 years plus uh, flying for a pro former professional bull rider. Brian has done it all. You had a conversation with him last night at dinner. His experience in the movie industry and in every different industry you could imagine. Very interesting. Great conversation. We've had a great time here so far in Yuma at the world's weirdest casino. But it was great. Great time last night. You were missed indeed. CC now, low and to the right, full flaps extended, landing light on. I think that's important in the daylight here. Look at all those landing lights coming in, allowing the aircraft just to barely hang on the prop and across the line. Safely across the line. Now he's got to get heavy on the brakes. Stopping just after 100 feet. Back into the power. He's going to get across that runway line so the next gentleman can land. We've got a heat of five. And as you guys know, if, you, if you're new to the series, you may not know, our air bosses are all retired air bosses from Oshkosh, Sun and Fun, places like that, people with lots of experience, and they work very hard to make sure that our spacing is safe for all involved. Sport Cub now dragging in a little bit different approach. Tailwheel is on the ground, and it is going to be a scratch. It's a scratch for Chad Wirtz. Chad Wirtz from San Jose, California. Chad, getting the flaps out. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Tell us more. Reed, Reed Hillview Airport. Beautiful. Reed yeah. Hillview. I, I, I don't know if that's true, but he says it's true, so I'm going to believe him <laughs> on it. Now that Bush King is on approach, the comically long landing gear, normally designed to, to accommodate a much larger propeller, I, I'm interested to see how long the prop is on this airplane. The other benefit, and you know a little bit more about this than I do, Eric, but the, the idea of these long, long legs they also do a lot for that initial takeoff angle of attack. They do indeed. Next week, we saw that just this oh. past month with Steve Henry. Ooh, bring the power out. He got it across the line. It is still flying. He kept the power until he's past the 200-foot mark. Need a ladder to get into that plane. <laughs> yeah. That looks like, you know, I'm a born and raised Florida boy, Florida boy, right? So Florida man right here. And a lot of our trucks in Florida look about that tall. So <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> It's, uh, it's definitely an interesting idea to have that longer gear to increase the cantilever, cantilever, cantaloupe, the cantilever <laughs> effect of how these airplanes rotate into the sky. And we saw a massive shift for Steve Henry, even just moving from his bush tires to his little knobby ATV tires and changing the pivot point, which allows him to rocket himself into the air even faster. So now we're going to get ready to let them go again. Looks like uh, our judges are making their way across the center line. We've got a bunch of awesome volunteers from, of all places, the Army Air National Guard. These guys, many of them, the men and ladies walking out right now, are aircraft mechanics on helicopters in the Air National Guard. That's exciting. I thought... I thought that might be true because of the, the way they were all standing during the safety briefing. They're all standing very assertively, and I thought, oh, I wonder. Assertive standards uh, are us. And, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And they wanted to be all they could be, so here they are. Looks like we have a departure. This is going to be a 182. This is our, our very good friend, Mr. Staines, in his jump aircraft. This is an IO550 powered 182. He says it is the fastest time to climb of any piston jump airplane on the market. And it is beautiful.
Start the rotation, 150 feet, get that tail on the ground. Here we go. Off the ground and respectable 275. 182, for folks at home, if you if you may be familiar with a 172, it's kind of just like a, you took a 172 and you blew some air into it. It is, that's, it is. That's a gross understatement because you get a lot more power, get a lot more speed. There's a lot more to it than that, but if you want to, you can if you ever see it. More than two grown, grown adults in it. More than two grown adults yeah. in it, yep. Like you, I, I could be in it with you if we had one. But we, we are two grown adults, it's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, right. So here's our friend. Here's our friend in the Satabri again. Steve Radenbaugh. Well, watch as the whole class makes their way onto the runway. This is for stage spacing. It allows these pilots to know exactly where they should be and allows them to get onto the line so we can keep the pace hot and hyped. And this dust is starting yeah, to move across. You're going to watch the, your announcers cover these, their faces. Trying not to breathe in so much dust. I'm sure my last year at uh, Outlaw Stole, and I'm not complaining because it was kind of cool. I, uh, I was able to take this laptop and literally dump the sand out of it at the end of the weekend. I so. think you'll be able to do that again here. And, uh, and we're, yeah, this we're, is just keeping the black along away from us right now. We're working so. on it. We're also going to go rob a bank after this. Well, if, you, if you're in, I am. We can okay, take the 182. Yeah. We're going to uh, Thelma and Louise this thing. So, <laughs> Which one's Thelma? Which one's Louise? I don't know. We can rock, paper, scissors for it. I thought it might be a good moment to take a, a minute to just explain how this works to people at home. And the way that I always explain it is that it's basically like your spot landing competition at your home airport turned up to 11. And so you can see that uh, Steve's taxiing up to the line there. It's broken into two chunks. First, we have the takeoff chunk. We're going to see now those main wheels were on the line. He's going to yank on that stick, get into the air, and then the judges, when we're in competition, will be spaced out along the runway, and they're going to mark where those main wheels leave the runway, and that's the first half of your score. And the second half of the score starts exactly at the end of your flight. When your main gear touches down after the line, and then you're able to come to a complete stop. It has to be a complete stop because you want to be making that most, what's the word I'm looking for here? Shortest. The shortest, the short, well, I was gonna say most consistent, but you oh. want the shortest possible and most consistent possible landings. So you're ranked or judged any time that your main gear touches down after the line. If it's before it touches down, or if you touch down before the line, what happens then? Well, if it's before the line, it's a scratch. And the way, that, the way to think about that is imagine that the line, before the line is a cliff. And we don't, we're doing this practically right at the top of the show. I'm sorry, I gotta stop for CC. Love that. There we go. I mean, think about how large that aircraft is and how short he's getting it off. But when CC goes into the backcountry, he cannot land before the line. Because there might be a cliff. They could be landing into a cliff. So that's the reason for the line that helps us keep it fair and keep it honest. But there's a real practical element to that in bush flying. Sport Cub on the roll. Just flying the airplane off the ground. No big pulls, no big transfer of energy. Not really rushing anything, allowing it to come off the ground simply. Radically different approach from the more experienced pilots. You'll notice how these pilots really work to allow the tailwheel to snap the engine's weight off the ground. Number 58 now, on the roll. Stoking. Glenn David. Very nice. It just looks elegant coming off the ground, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, just floats right off. I mean, it's definitely a purpose-built aircraft. Not many of those in existence, like I, a handful. I don't think I've ever seen one in real life. I want to say, oh, man, I have the internet right here. Let me look it up. I feel like there's like six of them. It sounds like Wikipedia says there are six in the world, and we've got one right here at Outlaw National Stole. So a couple other things we can talk about with how this works. And one is that people, things people always ask. So we measure from the main wheels, right? So on this aircraft here coming in on the Satabria, the main wheels are the front two. That's where we do our measurements for. If, if he were to ground loop, let's say, or turn in the landing, we'd measure from the furthest wheel away, furthest of the main wheels away from the line. The other thing that people ask all the time with tail trigger aircraft is, is it okay if the tail touches bef uh, before the line if the mains don't? And you, really, you just got to see that in competition to understand what we're talking about. We might see it right here. Is this S7 floating in? We got some nice, strong gusts. Yeah. He lands on the line. So the tail wheel can do whatever it wants. 
as Stopping long as 150 the, feet there, very impressive. As long as the mains touch after the line, the tail. So you'll actually see our more experienced pilots, our unlimited class pilots, actually put that tailwheel down and drag it through the grass. It's one of my favorite turf. things to watch. So wacky. CC now on approach, getting slow, keeping the angle of attack nice and high. He really prefers this aggressive outlook, and the Cessna 170 is kind of ideal for this because there's so much visibility in that aircraft as compared to so many other tailwheels out there. And I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm feeling more wind on my body. 100%. we got some strong wind right now. Saving it with power. Nice. Pulls the power out, gets back into the brakes, stopping that airplane in just under 75 feet. You could hear the fuselage rattle as the tail hit the ground there. Really exciting from CC. Now, low and to your right, we've got our friend Chad Wirtz in that 2008 Cub Crafters Sport Cub. I just have to highlight the fact that 75 foot landing in a Cessna 170, a four person airplane, is insane. Touch of power right as he crossed the line, heavy under braking now, that Sport Cub pulling the flaps out and getting back in line, saving space for the next guy. Again, in our actual competition, our pilot would be stopping so we could work for that most consistent win. The most consistent award has been given for consistency of less than six feet in the past. So a total difference between each takeoff and landing being less than six feet is just insane. Just want to mention that we were talking about the wind a second ago. We had a gust and look, now it's totally gone comparatively. We barely have a knot of wind on the runway for the Stole King here. Coming in hot. Hot, hot, hot. That said, our, our wind meter on our current broadcast is slightly off. Uh, if you notice, it says it's 0 0.07 knots. Multiply that times 100, and you'll get the accurate number. This is a new piece of technology brought to us by our team here, our volunteer team of awesome humans. This was designed and built over the last few months, and currently it's the, the software needs a little work, but the hardware is working great, so we're at 6 knots at uh, 336 degrees. Which, if I'm looking at this correctly, we've got a, like, a, like a 5 to six degree crosswind we do indeed altimeter three zero zero seven nice and high dry hot <laughs> not very humid though no there's no humidity here my lips have been chapped as i got off the airplane <laughs> back to round three the dust is coming back the covers are going on here we go the other thing that i'm hoping our viewers will get to see today is that uh, we have we're basically right underneath the airspace of Marine Corps Air Station Yuma. Not basically. We've had F-35s and B-22s flying over all day, about 450, well, about 550 feet above us. So the airspace, there's a little notch in the airspace that stops at, I think, 300 feet. That's correct. So we've got 300 feet to work with in the, uh, if you're a student pilot, look up the upside down wedding cake. That's sort of a, ver it's like a slice of the cake under <laughs> underneath the air station <laughs> airspace right now and yeah every once in a while you'll hear just freedom oh, overhead yeah. it's straight freedom you have to love watching it yesterday we had a flyby from an f-16 and an f-35 at the same time and there's something about being out here in this heat covered in dust you know you can't say you're hating your life whenever you have an f-16 fly over at three no feet. no they're putting in work we can the least we can do is be down here no question diving the nose now rotates that energy into the tail off the ground a little bit shorter than his previous attempts you notice that he has a tendency to not push the nose back over in our rookie class here the, these practices are part of the journey of learning how stole comps work and the best ways to make yourself as safe as possible so his peers will be meeting with him afterwards to encourage different elements of safety into his flying habits whether it's increasing speed to ensure that he keeps the airplane flying if he hits a gust or something else or changing the way his approach might look. Rands, S7 on the roll. Nice. Okay, so nice short takeoff there from Mr. Hollywood. That's what I'm going to call him. Mr. Hollywood, I like it. Motion picture and film work by day. CeCe Pocock on the line now. Watching the line judges start moving to different positions. They know that CeCe's capable of a sub-100 foot takeoff here. He gets the right gust. There it is. Oh. Hyper-aggressive. You can hear CeCe pulling the power out as soon as he pushed the nose back over. CeCe's a crowd favorite at a lot of the air shows around the country. You can see why. 
100%. BushAero.com, I believe, is his website where you too can go and learn to fly the safest way possible in the backcountry. Here's Chad Wirtz in the Carbon Cup. I was expecting, I was waiting for a more sudden flap actuation from because I saw his hand on the flap handle there, and he kind of ended up just nursing it off, which not a, not an improper thing to do. You'll see as he gets more comfortable, he might start really flapping, like jabbing him, him hard. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting to watch as more and more experience starts to develop habits in these pilots as they watch back the recordings of how they did and where they might improve. Oh, we've got a power failure. Number 58, getting the power back in. Sounds like it might be running a little rich there. We saw some exhaust kicking out there. If that's going to happen, that's the right place for that to happen. Perfect timing, and that's exactly why we're here, guys. We are here to learn the skills that are needed when the unexpected happens. So as he is getting that airplane moved off the runway, we see another aircraft on approach. We'll see if he gets her off and or we have to have a go around. He is off the runway. We're clear for another approach for Mr. Rad. Ooh, it's early. A Big healthy, bounce. healthy scratch. You know what? Sometimes you go for it and the wind drops out on you. You've got nothing left, but that's all right. That's, he's here for the journey. We've got a little time as I look to the left. We've got to talk about some of the people that make this possible, Eric. First, I want to, I want to talk about Lad Gardner Insurance. They're a part of National Stole since the beginning. Excellent customer service coverage. Got to check out their logo on all the all the shirts, the Lag Gardner shirts yeah. there. Uh, so yeah, Lag Gardner Insurance helps make this possible. They're uh, aviation protected all the, protect, all the time. Protect the aviation. That's right. They do Lad the protection. <laughs> we really do appreciate Lag Gardner. They help us insure these events. And I've seen a lot of our pilots start moving to have to have Lad actually handle the coverage, including myself. So I've been really really grateful for all of their support. Right now, Mr. Movies. <laughs> Doc Hollywood. We got to figure it out. We gotta, we'll, we'll workshop it tonight around the campfire. That we will. Rans S7. Winds are very, very low now. More of a crosswind than anything else. He's got carried a lot of speed, and it sounds like his engine's still running a little above idle. This is what practice is for, though. It's starting to dial those little elements in so that when you get to the real deal, you know exactly where you should be. Interesting. I just want to point out something that doesn't happen at National Stole a lot. Tire squeaks. No, we're not used to it. Usually on turf or dirt. Or mud if you're or a mud. Yeah, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of slinging mud. Speaking of slinging mud, I see Brandon Korn down there in his Cessna 205 who had an incredible takeoff sub 100 feet at Swamp Stole. He's here all the way from Central Texas, but now CC heavy under braking. Oh, he's got those brakes working under 100 feet for takeoff and landing. Now, I... <laughs> I said this at Swamp Stole. I feel like we say need to say it again. We look at the size of these aircraft and the the distances that they're putting down. You know, we saw we've seen some exciting events happening worldwide right now in Stole, and some of them maybe maybe happened really high up in the air in less than 75 feet. Coming in hot now on the with the Carbon Cub. We saw the big, heavy slip, and he was looking at the airplane in front of him, going, am I going around? Am I sticking it out? He's going to hover it down the runway now, touch it down on his own line, because he's getting to the back of the lineup very soon. So I'm talking about the Red Bull thing. The Red Bull thing. I'm talking about the Red Bull thing, and, and I'm, for, I don't want to discount it. For people who don't know what it is, let's explain we, a little Red bit Bull of thing. what happened. Well, so Cub Crafters and, and the Pateys and all these great minds in Stoll got together with Red Bull, and they, they landed a carbon cub on a helipad in Dubai in Dubai it was awesome. it was amazing and i don't want to discount what happened there there's a lot there's a lot that goes on there that doesn't go on in the ground right you've got all the rotor you've got the density altitude of the high desert you've got just like we do today honestly um, but you have a lot just a lot working against the pilot there it, it took a many attempts to get the winds working right to get it to put it down the one thing that i like to point out <laughs> there's a lot Hades, if especially if you're if you're watching, I'm not. It was amazing. <laughs> but we here in National Stoll regularly have aircraft that are landing. Now, they're landing on the ground, not an, on a pinnacle like a helicopter. Correct. But they are landing sub-75 feet. Not only that, we're seeing total combined scores in our Unlimited series of less than half 
of 70 feet. So you start looking at some of these numbers and it's just staggering. So uh, Swamp Stoll, Steve Henry took the win with a combined score of 35 feet for takeoff right. and landing. Yeah, combined. And that's insane. And I think that we should uh, commission, Red Bull should come and partner with us and we should do a whole competition on that helipad with the unlimited class. I, I won't lie. The thought has crossed my mind as well. I think it would be fabulous to see a bunch of our competitors on top of a helipad. You know, I think with the right guys, we could probably get two or three up there at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the gauntlet's being thrown. Here's Brandon Corn now at the line. And I, when you watch him fly, you got to remember how giant that airplane is. This is an airplane that is comfortable for five to six people to sit in. This is an airplane that we used to put six skydivers and the pilot in. The Cessna 205 is a behemoth. Basically, it's about as close to a 210 as you can get. Just add some external gear and some struts. This thing's a beast. And Brandon, I believe, painted this airplane himself. It's an absolutely beautiful job. Brandon's family has been in the painting business or the the car repair business for yeah. a very long time and corn collision center that's the one right out of central texas again his takeoff at swamp stole sub 100 feet which for heavy touring is one of the first times we've ever seen that yeah it's incredibly short the airplane is incredibly large <laughs> and it's definitely impressive i really like heavy heavy touring aircraft here we go oh the aggression a little early pull we see there here comes the here comes the dust yeah. oh here it comes brace yourself i think we actually dodged most of it there here's what i want to point out in the uh yep oh, there it is yep <laughs> yep getting a little dusty here in the normal competition when we've got turf pilots can dig in tail tail uh, or nose dragger pilots can dig in that tail they can use the turf to their advantage. Can't really do that here. That is correct. And we're, we're coughing and dying out here with the yeah. dust, but that's all right. We <laughs> see that Rand's S20. Nice rotation. He brought two of his kids with him to this event. They love flying. One has over 50 hours logged and more time and more different types than his dad does. Just There's a Steve. 10 years old. I love to see it. Steve going for another uh, another couple times through the pattern here's uh what do we call, i could call him araflex <laughs> araflex is kind of nice because it sounds like he's flexing on the roll that rotax 912 s 100 horsepower pulling him off the ground around 115 feet cc once again lined up power on We'll see how big of a bite he goes for in this diving entrance. Traffic's clear now, here he goes. Looks like he's starting off with 20 degrees of flaps. Rotates early, trying to pull those mains off, but it did not succeed. I saw sub 125. Not getting the same numbers he had last round, but that's still very impressive for a Cessna 170. And now again, look at the look at the winds right now. They're variable. We, I just saw three knots, eight knots. It's all over the place and it's low. We like it to be a little bit heavier for shorter scores. Let's talk about more sponsors. Legend Aircraft got them in the series a lot. Oh man, we basically had their own category at Swamp Stoll with a whole, I think there were eight aircraft flown out, eight Legend Cubs. Absolutely awesome to see, but let's talk about something heavier because right now Brandon Corn's on approach. This is where he's been working the hardest. He has been working his butt off trying to get these things slowed down. Get it stopped early. Listen to those yeah, tires grab. Buddy. Everybody's, uh, all the competitors are excited to buy new tires after this, <laughs> this competition <laughs> this week. Now, let's see who's off to the right. We've got a little bit of time to chat. We talked about Legend Aircraft. They have their own class almost, watching them come in and out of all the airfields. They always arrive with such style and grace, and those airplanes are uh, they are impressive to watch. Got the leading edge slats, usually gun racks on the mother of all Cub models. Oh, I love the sand. So now we've got a little bit of safety in action there, Eric. We've got a Bravo 3 in the line. He's going for a go around. You see with the uh, flashing kind of wig-wag landing light. That's just a spacing issue. The Airboss has said, hey, dude, 
Do a 360 Impressive for work here from race 127, stopping at about 129 feet. We are using the parallax lines on the runway this week. Once again, tested out at Swampstool allows our line judges to, to gauge the parallax effect from their eyeballs to the landing gear. So lines on the edge of the runway as well as lines in the middle or center line of the runway. And I want to give credit where credit's due. That was Jimmy O'Neill in the Rands S20 from Simi Valley, California. And again, Jimmy came here with two of his sons, his wife and their new dog. And watching that family just love flying together has been a lot of fun for me. It makes me miss my kids even more. I'm sure it will for you as well, seeing your, your daughters aren't here. It's all sad not to have family here, guys. Family's the best. And sharing flight with our families is what it's all about, is why we're here to inspire the next generation of aviators to join us in this incredible community of like-minded pilots. Winds picking up now, crosswind, about 45 degrees. We're seeing CC get pushed around by those thermals. Love just seeing those big barn door flaps hanging down. Absolutely, he is making a little bit of a different approach here. Higher, more power now, keep the, the, keeps the nose up and across the Ooh. line. CC took some heat for last year, being the king of scratching. This year, he is dialed in absolute perfection. Back on the roll to get out of the way of the next aircraft on approach, that beautiful black and red Satabria Backcountry 180. I don't even know how many of those they made. There certainly can't be a lot of them. Yeah, and it's interesting to me that the heritage of that aircraft, right, starting with the Champ, then working through aerobatic Cetabrias, decathlons. Ooh, high angle of attack. Gets it across Saved the line. It. Very nice. Thumbs up from the line judge. Now he's just got to get it stopped. Making make the judge run there. <laughs> we love seeing our volunteer judges. Again, guys, this is a community effort, not just from the community of aviation, but from the community itself. And on that note, I want to give a huge shout out to Yuma International Airport. Yuma International has stepped up and they wanted to be known that they are the place to fly into from anywhere in the world to enjoy all that Yuma has to offer. I, I flew into Phoenix, you flew into San Diego, and I'm regretting it because the people at Yuma International have been nothing but kind, and uh, what a great little airport here in their slice of heaven. I'm actually, I don't wanna brag, but Sunday morning, I'm departing from Yuma. I'm so envious. To go to Sedona. <laughs> Very nice. Because I've always, I've always wanted to do that. It's like a bucket list airport oh, for me man. to land at, and I've got a friend who's gonna come pick me up, like royalty, and fly me to Sedona like a, like a bougie uh, upper class person. So what you're saying is it's like like you. Yeah, yeah just, like, just like me. <laughs> just like me. That's freaking awesome. Sedona is one of the most beautiful places in the West, in my opinion. Truly a spiritual place. Quite exceptional to see all the sights. And you get to do it from the air. What better way of, uh, of doing it? There's no, there's yeah, no better it'll be way. really exciting. And I guess they've got like vortexes, something about the vortexes, energy the energy. Vortexes, yeah. So maybe I'll get some positive vibes. Speaking of positive vibes, let's talk about O'Neill USA. Jimmy O'Neill, you saw he's flying in the sport class today. He's practicing. He owns that company. And uh, O'Neill USA is donating some of the prizes this weekend. For it's super cool to see him come out here. A guy who's been competing his entire life in all sorts of contraptions from motorcycles to side-by-sides you name it jimmy is a competitor through and through and seeing them step up and uh, help us enjoy the ride or help our competitors enjoy the ride is always a beautiful thing brandon corn back on the line cessna 205 looking for that perfect gust of wind waiting for the air boss to say now is the time can we get it in under 100 feet once again the crosswinds may make it challenging but he's giving it all she's got Almost. Tail skid inches off the ground, pushing the nose back over, building that speed. I was going to mention that one of the things that Brandon has to do, right, once he gets it off the ground, it's such a big thing. He's got to really nurse it just right to fly on the edge of that before he sinks back down and touches the ground again and gets a longer score. And you know what's really interesting, if, if you could hear inside the cockpit, you know that, that that thing is just making noise with the stall horn. But Jimmy now on the rotation, beautiful. Sub 125, looks about 115. 100 horsepower, driving that aircraft into the air. Those S20 is very interesting to see. They're, they're a relatively new design, not as, not as venerable as the, the S7. It's been around longer in the RANS lineup. And they were quickly replaced by the S21. 
But the S20 is lighter, to my right. knowledge. So I you've think got this it, lighter aircraft. Yeah, tube and fabric instead of metal. Absolutely. But So I don't think we see very many of them, but they always seem to be really competitive. They do indeed. Speaking of competitive, CC, back to the line. Pure aggression, Bush Air 2. Now notice his position, and maybe you were about to mention this, Eric. He's, he's off to the side of the runway. He's going to grab as much of that crosswind as he can. And this is something that almost every one of our more experienced competitors does. They look for every little advantage they can get. And one of those biggest advantages is, hey, we want to use that crosswind component by driving across the runway. And now we see yeah. other competitors. Now look, oh wait, play. what did CeCe just do? I think I'm gonna give that a try as well. Exactly, once you see the guys who've been doing it to the point where they're considered legends, you gotta step in and learn from them. So here we are with that beautiful backwoods, backcountry Satabria on the roll. Kicking that left rudder, use the runway. He's going across the center line now. Let's the right wing drop just a bit, but he's off the ground. Just floating off. Beautiful. Really, really good. Speaking of really, really good, <laughs> <laughs> we should talk about flighthelmet.com. Dude, this is exciting. Have you seen it? No. We have one here now. It's got the light speeds in it. Absolutely lovely helmets. It's neat to see the difference from one of our other sponsors to have different options now for this life-saving piece of equipment. That's right, and that, I want to say FlightHelmet.com. It's the sales and service of flight helmets, the comms equipment, like you mentioned, the light speeds, clothing, flight clothing, safety and survival equipment. So it's not just helmets, even though that's in the name. Full service, independent helmet company. They service all make and models of helmets. You got to check them out. Check out more information. If you're a pilot here, you got information. I'm in your welcome bags. Uh, they, they ask you to fly with safety and comfort and leave the noise behind. That, that, that's a great little line there. It is a good line. That's pretty pretty solid. Brandon Corn now. Winds are dropping, even shifting more across. You can see him fighting that. That big rudder approach is hot. He's got to carry a lot of speed without the wind. He does. And, you know, he's really finding this balance point where he's got to keep the speed up because there is basically no headwind at that moment. And it's a big, heavy airplane. That airplane does not want to slow down. So he, he did a great job, I thought. He took all this energy he possibly could out with the landing gear. You know, the Brandon, <laughs> he's not like super proud of it, but I thought it was amazing. I feel it was Gainesville last year, like really showed everyone, <laughs> say this as nicely as possible, he showed everyone I know exactly the, what the true of. strength of the gear on that airplane. But I don't, like, you know, he was a little like, ah, I wish you would. It shows his dedication as a, as a pilot. He was able to put it down exactly where he wanted it to. He put it down firmly. We're not rating for passenger comfort. No, no, this is not Southwest Airlines. You know, it's more Ryanair. It's Ryanair. We're we're here to get this thing on. <laughs> so the much ground for that sponsorship. Okay. <laughs> That's all right, guys. As we're watching our next fire making his way in, Jimmy, Jimmy O'Neill, in that Rans S20. Now he's flying the Aero Classic 31s, which my understanding he says that their true measurements about a 28 inch tire. I've got the 27 and a halfs on my airplane, and apparently I may need to have to change them. Chopping power across the line, transfers the energy into the gear. Looks like the TK1's on that aircraft from Shock Monster. We've got a fire truck here and people walking up. I think we've got some fans from the city of Yuma. S7, he is a scratch. I'd rather get scratches out of my system today. So I, I keep saying this, you know, between our crew, yesterday there were 10 of us here for the whole day setting up, and then today there were about 18 or 20 of us setting up. So at one of these events, we just need to turn the tables, rent a few airplanes, and have everybody who's on the crew have to fly the event. Oh, man. Yeah, I would. I mean, I, I think I'd be okay, but... We need more numbers? We need more numbers. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing this in my 172 at home. I'm not doing it in my RV6 at home. Here comes CC into the power. Oh, there's Whoa. the tail touch. Nice. Did he good? Was it good? It looked good. I think I got it. I think I saw a thumbs up over there. And another go around. This is good to see, guys. This is exactly what we want in one of these events. We want pilots not 
hesitating to go around, create the spacing, not to get too slow to make sure that we keep this as safe as humanly possible. And it's something worth talking about. I mean, flying an airplane around a pattern with a bunch of other airplanes can be extremely safe, but there are some areas of danger. And one of those areas is getting too slow, particularly on your base to final turn or on your final. We're seeing these pilots exercising ex excellent control and safety decision making. We love to see it. Now watch that base to final turn after the go around there, coming in on short final, getting lined up. I'm going to see if I can do a little bit of a race myself and talk about another sponsor, Lift Aviation. Lift Aviation USA, they're a new sponsor of National Stole this year. Their love of flying drives them to deliver only the finest in aviation products. They believe totally, the, they believe today's pilots deserve much more than what's currently offered. Lift Aviation, they bridge the gap between making products that are stronger, lighter, and you can products you can trust. They've got samples up in the merch booth and uh, a lot of scuttlebutt about their shoes. Big bounce. Big, Big bounce. scratch. That's all right, though. This is part of the practice process. This is a rookie joining us for the first time, having a blast. And talking about those lift shoes, the Legend guys have created their own Legend with the gold lift shoes that go back and forth between the Legend Aviation pilots. I thought you were going to talk about how I managed to use the word scuttlebutt. I was in a live impressed. broadcast, yeah. Pretty impressed. Because I'm apparently from the 1930s. From the 1930s, sir. Uh, <laughs> we should also talk about Sarasota Avionics. They're a long-term partner of National Stoll, and they provide excellent prizes for us. They're your authorized Garmin dealer and the number one aircraft avionics installing dealer in the nation. They have five locations across Florida. They're absolutely incredible. On display here today, we got the Garmin watch provided by them, the Garmin inReach, USB chargers. Those are all provided as prizes for the pilots this weekend. They're your one-stop shop for your next avionics upgrade. And I'll say this, too. If you're in the area, if you're between California and New Mexico, Idaho and Mexico, come on down. We need more pilots. We'd love to see more people joining us for the rookie class or from one of the more experienced classes if you have the experience. We have a ton of beautiful prizes and some insane trophies here for Outlaw this year. I, I heard the end of what you said. Something about coming up in a second. I can hear you breathing. Oh, okay. gotcha. All right, Brandon Corn with that beautifully painted, beautifully painted Cessna. I just, I am so in awe of what he does with this every The reason I get all a flutter since we're using old terms, where you get all a flutter about uh, these larger aircraft, these touring aircraft, is because they're the airplanes that you learn how to fly in. They're the airplanes that are maybe, I don't know if it's actually true, but they feel more accessible, right? If you decide to become a pilot, which everyone listening or watching this should do, it's it's changed my life in which, ways which I can't. Is, let's, let's change that. Everyone should do it. Yeah, everyone should do it. There you go. You got to do it. Uh, totally changed my, changed my life. Uh, these are the aircraft that you learn in, right? You learn in a 172, maybe, or, or maybe if you're if you're really cool at J3 Cub like me, <laughs> flex. <laughs> the planes like Brandon Court taking off now. Oh, 180 or so feet, fantastic performance really? from Brandon. I mean, what's crazy is when you're learning to fly in planes, like, you know, maybe a 205 is not. This is not where you're learning to fly in, but, but it, it looks, looks like one. It looks like one. The, these aircraft are they're the kind that you don't think about landing at Johnson Creek, let's say. That's right. Jimmy now taking that more aggressive approach on the right side of the runway, using the entire runway up, allowing him to maximize the use of that crosswind. Rands after Rands. Here's the uh, S7. A little bit different approach. Not worried about the center line. Or not, <laughs> not worried a little bit more about the center line, I should say. But diving the airplane to the left, getting it in. And notice... I don't know if you can see it at home. He's got his hand up on that that uh, glare shield cross beam and trying to get the right feel as he's yanking on things in there. Well, I'm being super specific. Here's CC Pocock. <laughs> trying we, to get the right we body actually position. actually pay Ryan for, for by the word this year. CC off in less than 125 for sure. Well, with, what you don't know is that I was challenged to use a flutter and scuttlebutt. That's not true. <laughs> if only you had been, I could see Steph Strickland paying you for for that bet. Once Steph, again, if you're watching, let me know what you want me to weave into the broadcast tomorrow. You never know what could happen. Here we go. Early rotation. Does get that left wheel up, but the right stayed stuck down till about the 225. I don't have a good good dad joke transition, but 
I was going to say uh, 225 size tires. I don't know. There's this trailer next to us, and we got to talk about that. This it's, is exciting. I got, so as one of the owners here at National Stoll, I have to I have to give a little hype. All right. Yeah, hype it up, man. It's beautiful. So fellow pilot and uh, trailer extraordinaire, one of our competitors at Gainesville last year, is the owner of this company, USA Trailers Direct. You can see it over my shoulder here. Uh, yeah. Right, there you go. And and they, they allowed us to use one of their trailers for a broadcast booth at the event at Lone Star Stoll last year, and that was exciting. And then we, they decided to partner with us, and they provided this incredible 26 and a half foot eight and a half foot wide trailer that has now been built out into a production studio. So this thing has an air conditioning, all of our live stream equipment, everything's in there. Brandon Korn now across the line carrying less speed. And I was interesting is he changed that up. He was low and you could hear him just goose in the throttle, goose in the throttle over and over again to keep it off the ground until he's over the line. He's really been working to dial in those landings. And talking more about USA Trailers, because again, this is the very first event we've had this production trailer here. This is the first time we get to really professionalize the level of what we're doing. We want to create better and better broadcasts for every single one of these, as well as better and better recorded content, which is coming soon, guys. We've got more cameras on the field than we've ever had, going from just two a year ago to, I think, 11 today. Right now in front of us, we've got uh, one of our guys who's recording our very own television show, and that means that Ryan Dombrowski has to point at the I camera. I point. I can't not point at cameras. That's what I do is I point. <laughs> It makes me feel better to point at cameras. It makes me feel better. Here, check it out here on short, short final. Jimmy O'Neill pulling the power out a little late, but safely across the line. Getting on those brakes, those 10-inch wheels, doing some work. I like, I don't know if we've really talked about it yet, the, the cowling on that feels custom. It feels, well, he it just feels went right over the runway light. No, no big, though. With that was tires. hilarious. Yeah, he just went right over. Hyper-aggressive. S7 now. Nose is high. He's going to be a little long, but he's going to translate as much of that energy into the gear as possible and get on those brakes. Okay, we're seeing some improvement there. So practice is all about. Yes, indeed. So we'll go way back in our conversation two airplanes ago. Many thanks to USA Trailers Direct. Craig, thank you if you're watching. We cannot say enough about the quality of the trailers. And if you're looking for a trailer for whatever toy you need to haul or a production, they have dealers in 47 states all over the U.S. So they have a local dealer for you. He's a fellow aviator. He flies a Husky. He goes all over the country, and he loves it. Here comes CC, loving his life as well. High angle of attack, chopping power a little late. He's going to float, translate all the energy into the gear he can. And you can see those big shocks. I wonder if those are Acmes. They probably are, knowing him. Uh, but that's neat to see this new trend of shocks on spring gear. Yeah, switching over, switching over to that, right? You're seeing that, that way to mitigate the dreaded Cessna bounce. Speaking Which of a Cessna, Cessna bounce. Well, a Satabri bounce this time, but. That said though, you know, he did get a big bounce, but if you notice how much inertia was changed there, right? You don't want to bounce, if you can help it, ever in an airplane, but he put so much energy into the ground that it was allowed him to reduce his overall role, and that is what it's all about. Right, so we, I was talking to Jay Stanford, Jay Stanford, a very accomplished, uh, aggressive uh, stole pilot, built a custom Custom built you can't, Super Cub. You can't say custom once. It's a custom, custom Super Cub because custom. that airplane is exceptional. I, I just called it a Super Cub once on the stream, and he like marched over, and he's like, I love you, but we have a problem. We have a major problem. We have a big problem. Uh, so he talks a lot about that, right? The idea of how much energy can you transfer into the ground instead of forward. And it wasn't until he explained it to me that way with, like, a drawing... <laughs> Like vectors, like physics vectors, right? But I was like, he physicsed oh. you? Yeah, he physics me. <laughs> He's a big time physics guy, though. Hey, you have to respect it. And you also have to respect his 75 horsepower wet shot of nitrous. Yeah, that does help. It does. It has been known to enhance the capabilities of an airplane. And many of us have wondered if CC has nitrous in that beautiful number two bush air over there, because he's been known from time to time to surprise people with it. And uh, mm. we'll have to see with the gloves come off tomorrow in the in the primary race. I'll have to ask him tonight and see. He, I met him for the first. I've seen him comp compete a number of times. And we actually like crossed paths for the first time today, shook hands, and I was like. CC, you're a legend. And he's like, I know you. And I was like, I hope that's good. <laughs> so let's talk about other people we know 
rugged radios. Oh man, I've got a rugged radio on my hip right now. You want to see gotta, it? I would love to see it. Yeah. Show. So these are they've got a background in off road. So they do. What's really interesting, so my main business, the business that I have been in for the last 11 years, we use these handheld radios every day, right? Handheld radios every day, and we're going to switch to Rugged, and here's why. They can carry so many channels, digital encryption. There's so many different elements that make Rugged radios special, not to mention the fact that it plugs in. You don't have to use one of those wonky chargers. Oh, it sure. It just plugs in right there. Now your space is saved. Super, super happy. Rugged, thank you so much for all you do. They offer radios for all sorts of different things, from emergency services to off-road to now aviation. They have headsets. They have right. all sorts of cool things. They're, they're, they're I awesome. saw even uh, they're working with, uh, believe it or not, uh, YouTuber Just Plain Silly. It makes sense. He's, he's doing rugged radio things now. So they're, they're all over the place, and it's really exciting to see them. We thank them for their support. Also, uh, we got to talk about Flight Outfitters. Oh, man, I love my Flight Outfitters swag. Right now I'm missing it because I don't have my hat. The Flight Outfitters hats don't have the little button on top. Oh, yeah. Right? So Mine's if you're wearing a, a headset yeah. and you've got a little button on top, you're guaranteed a headache. But Flight Outfitters makes equipment designed for aviators of all sorts, whether it's T-shirts, jackets, you name it. They've got it. There's that 182 back again, carrying the power. You would have thought that Jonathan Staines would have gone for a stole landing there just to show off. But, uh, no, he's getting the power in and making sure he gets to the back of the lineup where he belongs. That's a, it's a pretty 182. It's a beautiful 182. It's a beautiful and that IO 550, and it just makes it a screamer. Flight Outfitters, I want to add, just, you were talking about the great hats, but they have lots of great stuff there. Uh, they've got an exclusive national stole jacket now. It's my favorite jacket. Customized landing page. You can Pilots can go through to order the, the national stole stuff, and they provide prizes for the first through third place class winners. And you can check out, there's a, a referral link. Yeah. National Stole referral link that you can use to find all this stuff to support everyone. So that's really exciting. Thank you to Fl Flight Outfitters there. We also have a minute. We can talk about AirTech Coatings. Oh, man. They make paint fly. That's their, that's their little byline, but it's the truth, guys. If you've seen an airplane covered with AirTech, you've seen an airplane that has the most incredible depth of color, depth of feel. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, yeah, the, the beautiful. I mean, literally, like the, talk about like that wet look. Oh yeah, it's, that wet it's look incredible. aircraft paint. You've, it's like you can walk up and shave in the mirror. Basically, <laughs> it's just so beautiful to see. Lots of craftsmanship being applied there. Uh, we also got to talk about committee coffee. Now, the committee coffee, small batch coffee. They aim to make specialty coffee more accessible to the everyday consumer. Uh, that's law enforcement owned, and they're a brand new sponsor Dude, for National Dude, I have to talk Stole. about this because I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm a coffee nerd. There's a lot of people out there who are bigger coffee nerds than I am, but I love great coffee. And one of the things that Committee Coffee does that's different is they actually tell you not just what country the coffee is sourced from, but what farm it's sourced from, what the altitude is, what the pH balance is, what you can expect each of the flavors to be like. So if you're like me and you have a little acid reflux, you know, I'm getting up there yeah, in age. Yeah, yeah. You want to have a coffee that's going to be perfect for your body, and they make it. So super excited about having them on board. If you want to try their coffee, make sure you check out their link on our website. We can share more information with you, and very soon we're going to have their coffee as the official coffee of National Soul. So our pilots will be having it every morning. Yeah, so use coupon code STOLE, STOLE. when you make your purchase at committeecoffee.com. We also have a few other people, people, people? We have a few other people that have helped bring this to life this weekend. Flying Eyes. we got to talk about Flying Eyes. They're the sunglasses with the lightest and most comfortable aviation uh, comfort thing around. Basically, what I'm talking about <laughs> the is frames. The frames, so the yeah. Frames so they're super, super thin. thin. Yeah. yeah. And so when you wear a headset like this... They it don't doesn't hurt. break your ANR. Exactly. Right? And I keep a pair of my airplane every day. You know the biggest reason why? Why is that? They come with a lifetime warranty. So I can oh. go to any air show, walk up to the Flying Eyes booth and say, look, my lenses are scratched, and boom, pfft, I get new lenses. You can just switch it out. And they are uh, great. You can also do uh, prescription lenses you can in indeed. those Flying Eyes, so great. All right, we're back up and running now. More practice here in Summerton, Arizona for Outlaw Stole. 102 They're feet for Jimmy O'Neill. Love to see it. More aircraft joining the lineup for this open practice. We're going to have to extend the pattern. Brands S7 on the roll. Quick rotation, about 140 feet. 
And CC now on the center line, seeing the flag start to angle a bit more down the runway. We can see that on our little wind bug, working the rudder. And off the ground, just over 100 feet, hanging it off the nose. Wow, Push that, that over. That the deck CC. angle. I guess we can read, we can read bush air on the top of the wing there. Want to give give some stats about Summerton while we're here. We got an elevation of 177 feet above sea level. We're on uh, runway 35 and we're not using all 3,000 feet of it, but in case you're wondering, 60 feet wide. 60 feet wide and I have to say we're using about 200 feet on average here of this runway, <laughs> which is pretty great. And I, I posted on Instagram, I was like, what's the pi rep for sand? on the runway because we actually do have little little sand dunes on the edge of the runway you can imagine that would happen here's that sport cub and it's interesting to see when we have these aircraft flying that are maybe less on the horsepower and more on the lightness watching them compete whoa listen to that she sounds angry there's the rotation right around 165 feet they're showing at 158 feet. Rand's S7 joining the pack. All white, a late arrival. He just registered. I'm looking at the registration sheet because I wanted to know what engine was in there. It sounds different to me. Did that sound different to you? You know, I hope it's different just so that you will feel so that loved. I feel vindicated. Yeah, Maybe vindication is important. I mean, it just sounded a little more aggressive than what we've heard today. Oh. That is not Hal. So as you guys may or may not know, Hal had an incident on the flight down. So Hal landed on a road and had an incident with his landing gear and his spar. So, so far, he's not here. Well, if it's a spar issue, he's got not some... Not spar. Sorry, strut. Strut. Oh, maybe strut issue he could fix. I mean, knowing Hal... Can Hal fix anything. Knowing Hal, I fully expect him to be here tomorrow and competing. The Ooh, oh, it's a just scratch, a but scratch. a fantastic landing. That would have been a stop in sub-75 feet. Jimmy, the competitor that he is, I fully expect him to be frustrated with that one tonight. No, the reason I, and I, and I asked because the end numbers were close. And I was like, that doesn't look like Hal's plane, but who knows? Who knows what he would do? He'd just come in with something brand new. He's a magician. I, I half expect Hal to show up tomorrow. I really do. The airplane was on the side of the road in a bush yesterday morning, which means he's had plenty of time to repair it and get back on the in the air. Yeah, just, I, I was like... I saw the news report, was glad to see that he was fine, and I was like, oh, that doesn't look so bad. He'll be there. He'll you just never take know. off in a minute. Just take off in a minute. As long as there's still duct tape, Hal has a chance. All right, CC on approach. He's been flying these very stabilized approaches, but right there, hits some sink, starts to make his way down the runway. His particular style has always been to be just behind the power curve, keeping that angle of attack high. He wants the tail low, right to right as low as keep his head that back. Can't wear it. Wants to keep the, the nose dust. as high as possible so he can translate as much energy as possible into the shocks. There's the words. Oh, he's There's the save perfection. It. Save it. Nice. He got it across it the line. It is safe. It's like watching a musician. It really is. I mean, honestly, he's playing the strings, right? This is not a guy who's out there banging on a keyboard. He is plucking the strings like he's playing a harp. Aggressive turnout. Once again, with that beautiful black and red, Satabria fighting the winds, carrying a little extra speed. Will he get it across the line? He does. But there's a, that's a, there's a problem with that sometimes, right, is when you add the power to make it over the line. Now you've got more speed and altitude to deal with. And you could see that he gave up maybe 50 to 75 feet. He did, but the winds are super switchy. We could start to feel it here now. We're starting to feel what he's experiencing. We know that, you know what? Sometimes it swirls, sometimes it whirls, and sometimes you have to add that power because you think you're gonna sink out when in fact you could have made it. Speaking of power and adding power, hold it off, not quite. Not quite. What's really impressive, though, is watching like guys like Kelly Qualls last weekend, and not last weekend, a few last weekends month, ago, yeah, how, how well he improved every single run in this beautiful airplane. These lightweight carbon cups, the 100 horsepower, just impressive, impressive airplanes. It's sport cubs, excuse me. 
So we were talking about Hal. Hal's running a Duke propeller. I was ex- excited I'm running to a see. Duke. You're running a Duke propeller on your aircraft. That's a propeller designed in France. They're assembled in the U.S. They're a complete range of aeronautical carbon-made propellers for light sport planes. So Hal's running it. You're running it. You're running on your RV? On the Kit Fox. On your Kit I Fox. actually have one on order for the RV. It's supposed to be put on next month. And what's neat about these is it's not just a carbon fiber blade. Most carbon fiber or most propeller companies make carbon fiber blades. They make a carbon fiber hub as well as blade. And here comes one that might be running a Duke prop as well. That Rans S7 right at the line. I think I got a thumbs up on it and it is going to be stopped in just about 160 feet. Number 508 Delta Hotel, Mystery Man. So this is 508 Delta Hotel, and guess what Hal Stockman's end number is? Hit me. 509 Delta Hotel. No so way. I'm not crazy. I you saw what, the end number, you know and I was actually, like, wait a minute. Is? You know what this is? That's Hal's old airplane. Is that Hal's old airplane? I bet you there? that's Hal's old airplane. I heard that someone bought it recently, so that would make some sense. If that's Hal's old airplane, that is a contender indeed. And that would explain the... Different one digit. sound. I'm not crazy. You're not crazy, Hooray! Ryan. I was like 508, 509. Let me Are call you kidding? your wife and let you, let her know. Oh yeah, please. <laughs> Anything you can do to help me there. <laughs> Here it goes. Though I believe that must be Hal's old airplane. That would definitely explain the crazy noise that came out of it. Not sounding much at all like a standard 912 or 914. If I recall, I, now I, I have the tendency to not be able to forget anything about airplanes, and if I remember correctly, that airplane was a 912S that Hal built to around 130 horsepower. So adding adding about a fair 30%, amount. Yeah, yeah, about yeah. 30% power. But again, that is some old information, so it could be incorrect. I will confirm tonight, and tomorrow if I get to join you on the microphone, we'll have as many details for, as possible for you guys, because knowing those things is what is uh, really interesting to see how much of this performance is airplane. And how much the performance is the pilot? Because you can throw 400 horsepower in an airplane, and I'm going to be able to fly the heck out of it, but I'm not going to be able to fly it like Steve Henry. Right. right? I mean, I certainly wouldn't. I would. It's very, very fun to have all the details we can get. On the roll, Mr. Rad in Backcountry 66. The, the other thing I want to comment on is there's a certain poetry to the legacy of an airplane specifically, right? You've got this aircraft that potentially Hal owned previously, and now it's kind of come back home to compete. 100%. Every airplane carries a story, right? Every airplane carries on more than just the sum of its parts. And an eight hotel here, Delta Hotel. Listen to that motor scream. He's on the roll. Nice. And rotating just past the 175 foot mark that was i just got confirmation from uh, our our man the man behind the mirror the man in the booth he walked out and said that airplane flew in oshkosh 2014 with hal at the controls hal at the controls in 2014 so good, good memory. how far the grasshoppers have come or whatever he called whatever however you want to call it uh we got some other people we got to help uh people know about here and people that have made this we got to talk about some local sponsors so first we've got the coco pa resort and casino they're just 0.3 miles from here i can see that we had dinner there last night it was a great time so thank you to them we had a great dinner you, you guys had this dinner at the state at the steakhouse the national stole curse continued for me with my flight into town being delayed but so i hey, missed it don't feel bad our flight was so delayed that we got in at 5 a.m eastern time so <laughs> it was a brutal travel day we should have flown into yuma yeah, should have flown into Yuma. Quail Corp. Also, they're a construction company serving Arizona since 1999. They donated, donated, they donated cones and the lighted road sign for today. So thank you to them. And actually, I have to say that is a huge thank you because these companies who step up locally to bring things like cones to keep these the the viewers safe is crucial to us. And without their help. National Stowe would be nothing. And this really is a volunteer organization at this point. We have so many volunteers here from helicopter repairmen to, you know, people donating cones. It's a great thing, and we're excited for an incredible weekend right here in Summerton, Arizona. Skydive San, Lu- San Luis? San Luis? San Lu- pro- you know, we should probably, probably work on our figure Spanish. that out yeah. before tomorrow. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, that's Jonathan Stain's company. He established Outlaw, and he brought National Stoll in last year to run the event. So obviously a huge help there. Appreciate that. And we also have Load 'em Up Fries. It's a food truck loaded with fries. I'm excited for the for tomorrow, guys. The food trucks will be arriving tomorrow morning, and we are all excited for the party-like atmosphere they bring. As our wind has shifted to a 90-degree crosswind, you can see that left wing dropping low. Power coming in a little late. Didn't make oh. it across the line, and it looks like he is going to push it further down. But, like, list, like, look at that. So, especially tail dragger pilots, right? That's a huge thing when you're learning to fly in a tail dragger. If you start getting into that, like, oscillation bounce situation, it's better just to power up, get some wind over the wings, and, and fly either further down the runway in this case, or, or just do a go around. It is absolutely crucial. And again, these are all skills that we work on here at National Stoll to make you a better pilot for all of your flying. As we saw some aggressive braking there. I heard the pause in your voice. Oh, <laughs> so, I had to pause. So it's like, what's going oh, on? Lord. <laughs> well, and this is the difference, right? You can be more aggressive with your braking on turf. And so that's an adjustment for everyone today. Again, talking about the fun things with tail wheels. I don't know if we were still on the stream there, but as he came off the runway, his castering tail wheel broke loose and he got to do a little drift burnout for us. With the dust, it looked kind of cool. It does look cool. It doesn't feel cool. This no, dust is not everywhere. Feel, covered in it. We also have to talk about Mariscos El Mirador. That's another food truck that that's going to be with us Spanish. Bro. That one I did. Why can't I get... Is it San Luis? <laughs> San no, that sounds French. Ooh, Whoa, big dropping bounce. dropping it in. The wind now, we've got a significant amount of wind. I would say 30 or so miles an hour off our backs. Just getting sandblasted he right now. He touched down at the perfect moment because their papers are flying everywhere across the runway as a dust devil is moving through, and it is everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Holy cow. Hold on to your hats, everyone. Quite literally, guys, touching down in a dust devil. Impressive work in that Rans S7. Feeling, uh, feeling a little exfoliated right now. <laughs> feel a, lot of, a lot of people would pay good money for this. I would pay good money for a shower. Oh, that's going to happen later for sure. Not you and me together. No, I mean, maybe. I mean, we it, could just things happen. It's it all right. Out. All right. As we come back to the line and the winds have resumed their normal direction. <laughs> that was a good one. That was exciting. You have to love the desert. And I got to just give a tip of the hat. I mean, that was some impressive piloting for literally landing on the edge of a freaking cyclone. Yeah, it's totally, totally good reaction time there, keeping it all safe and good. And I think that goes back, so we keep going. I feel like I'm just beating a dead horse here, but the thing that... It's dead. It doesn't mind. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't mind. The, watching National Stole for me as someone who's uh, a tail dragger pilot, someone who's a you know, a, a private pilot, re not recreational pilot in terms of rating, but in terms of what I do with it. Learning so much watching these pilots and watching them demonstrate at every competition just the importance of proficiency. The idea that to compete here, it, one, it's a bit of a every pilot's game, right? You can come in and put in the time, put in the reps. Love the sound of that aircraft. You can put in the reps and get proficient, but two, it's the importance of proficiency, right? An average pilot experiencing what we just experienced with that gust and the dust and everything, that could be a sketchy situation. But if you put in the reps and put in the time, that's going to be something that you can do safely and handle within the envelope of your capability. Absolutely. And it really is all about energy management. You know, when we're flying at any point, whether we're in cruise altitude or whatever it might be, that energy management is so absolutely important and what we practice here at National Stoll is the most crucial moments of energy management that take off when you're down in a river valley and you want to get clear of those trees yes you need to know your, your performance numbers but you need to know your energy management and feel what the airplane's doing because if you do it all off the book and just follow the science the art of it will be lost to you and sometimes the art of it's what keeps you alive well and the, I mean here's the the more practical like if I were to apply it, like the side note is that if you're not putting in those reps or you're only doing it by the book, you aren't, you're missing out on a large portion of aviation that an average airplane can do. We've got Piper Zilla that's in the, you know, Jeff. Jeff's here today. I'm excited to watch uh, him fly. Watching him in, the, in a Cherokee, doing things in a Cherokee that I never thought were possible. Absolutely. Jeff flew all the way in from Florida in that Cherokee 180. 
And he said he'll be practicing tomorrow morning. Scratch It'll be exciting to see him continue his adventures, watching Jeff enjoy his life, living life to the fullest. That is a scratch indeed for 6'9", Charlie Papa. At least the pilots are being respectful of us and not blasting us with the prop wash today. That, that was planned, actually. I, I won't lie to you. We, we moved the taxiway across the runway to avoid the dust. A little different approach now. Impressive work here. He's starting to dial that airplane in. Again, another newcomer to the series flying in the rookie class. We created this class to encourage more and more pilots to join us on the National Stoll Tour because this is a great way to get to know a community of like-minded individuals and to work on being the best pilot you can be. Wanted to make an, give another compliment there, right? Coming across the line, nice big gust. Nice big gust indeed. Keeping it all tight. Here comes our favorite pilot for all things Dust Devil. <laughs> <laughs> little less aggressive approach this time. Gets a little win there. Takes the bounce. Balancing on those brakes. Just around 210 feet. I noticed the judges, because it's practice today, they're, they're doing a good job of reminding some of the folks that don't compete as much to stop. Yes, it's important. Again, that most consistent award can only be awarded if you stop. If you don't stop, you get judged at a 500-foot landing. Right, and then you're out of the running. You're out of the running, 100%. Yeah, and so that the, let's talk about that most consistent award a little bit. I mean, I think the what's nice about it is it means that there's, in addition to the classes, and we, we can talk about the classes a, a little bit too in a minute, about how the airplanes are grouped together competitively. It's a little different this season. But uh, in terms of most competitive, what's great is it's kind of a, an equalizer uh, category. Yeah, most consistent allows every pilot from every class to compete for the same thing, which is being Maybe, I won't say the best pilot, but maybe it is the best maybe pilot. Maybe the best, yeah. I mean, we've seen guys like uh, Austin Clemens win that with, I think he, I want to say he had five feet of variation in an entire day of competing. Five feet difference between takeoff and landing three times. Yeah, it's incredible. Incredible consistency. That shows you that, you know, no matter what the conditions are, you're going to make that airplane perform the same time and time again. And what's great about that is even rookies to the series can be competitive there. We, we saw that at the Central Florida Classic a few seasons ago. Uh, a nice gentleman from Verona, Wisconsin in a mall showed up. I remember that. put down most consistent against Steve Henry. Like beat Steve Henry out because he was very consistent. He put it down very consistently. Maybe not as short, obviously. Interesting control here. You saw him trying to lock up the brakes and then let him on the roll. It's always fun to talk to these pilots after their first time at a, as a rookie and get some feedback on what they were thinking. Were they trying to get the rotation early? Were they trying to fly it off the ground? What was their goal? Do they know how their airplane comes off the ground <laughs> right. best? You know, There's a lot of things that you learn in competition you'd never learn anywhere else because you're just not paying as much attention if you're not having fun. So I wanted to ask you about uh, rookie. There's a story that we've been kind of following, uh, not in the rookie class, but at Swampstool, kind of a, a great story to see was Justin Tisdale. And what was great for me watching him uh, on the outside, well, there we go. See, we're getting a little more confident there, right? Um, watching Justin become part of the community was really special as well. Watching the... Justin's part of the family, man. Justin has been... Justin wears his heart on his sleeve and his story everywhere. I love seeing him come from his military background and just falling in love with general aviation, falling in love with this community. And he's had his challenges. I mean, it, Gainesville last year, having the motor out and damaging his equipment. And now, you know, he's, he's down there. He said he's found some gremlins, so he's not practicing today until later. But he loves this, you know, yeah. and you can see it viscerally in him. And his first, it was his first off-airport landing, if I'm not mistaken, during Swamp. At Swamp Stall, yeah. They landed down at the beach. It was awesome to see. Ooh, we're going to see another bouncer. Is the power going to come in? Nose is coming up, bleeding off the, the speed. 
It is not a, a scratch. <laughs> not where he was looking to go, sadly. Joe Whiteling in Hal's old airplane here, the voice from above. Our producers letting us know who's in the air in each airplane. Always nice to have the information to share with you all. Joe Whiteling and the Rans S7 experiencing some significant drop there. Again, these winds are switchy. It's challenging, and that's why we got another scratch. So this is an aircraft that, I mean, this is an unlimited class built aircraft. 100%. So we'll have to see how he improves and gets better and better as he runs it. I, You know, I think what's always been so fun to wow about watching Hal, I mean, you always have the classic grudge match in Unlimited now between uh, Steve Henry, who's who's slamming it with horsepower and lightness and other things, and then, and uh, honestly, a bunch of just crazy engineering, right? And then you've got folks like Hal. Who, Hal and Dan, and those guys are, yeah, you know, who are coming in it with lightness. Weight. Yeah, give us as much wing area as possible, keep it as light as possible. Everything they possibly can do to compete with the, what, 400 horsepower of Yeehaw 8. It's a lot of work to compete, but there are different ways to cut this. You can use a two stroke engine, you can build longer wings, you know, and it's becoming incredibly competitive. We saw at Sun and Fun this year, Dan Reynolds smoked Steve Henry's best score. Yeah. With the lawn dart landing. With the lawn dart. Now that was a butter landing. I think he's just showing off now. Back to the line, our rookies. I love seeing this Atabria has not come off their own way yet. He's like, I'm, I'm not going in. We got time to practice, I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna enjoy every second I have. And I'm going to find ways to get better. We're going to encourage these pilots to remember, it's hot outside. Keep hydrated. Our, our pilot safety briefing, I think we said hydrated at least 15 times. But I do have to say, a big shout out to Brian Moore as well, who also hasn't come in. And is just making them look smoother and smoother. I think as we are here throughout the day, we're going to have to start moving our tent around. I know, my shade. back's getting old. Oh, oh, no, the guy from Wisconsin's getting hot. Oh, it's going to melt. <laughs> the guy from Florida's getting hot, too. It's all right. Okay, well, it's a, you're used to a humid heat. It's a dry heat here. It's just an oven here. Yeah, it's just baking here. <laughs> uh, you know, who could help me out with that? If I, uh, if I needed it, it would be Lad Gardner Insurance. They'd insure your back? They could insure my back. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to them again for uh, maybe instead of aviation protected, it's announcer protected. We could use a little announcer protection from time to time when we say the wrong things and we catch heck for it for the rest of the week. But that's all right. It's a family. That's what we're here for. On the roll, the backcountry Satabria with 180 horsepower. Just making it look graceful. Really graceful. I mean, it's, it's a, and it's a beefy, it's a beefy Satabria. I want to go fly that airplane. I haven't flown a Satabri since I was 16 years old, but here comes Hal's old airplane on the roll, growling loud. Ooh, best takeoff yet. That was a really good takeoff. I was going to say, like, we probably should stop calling it Hal's old airplane. <laughs> that, that is a fair point. <laughs> He's fair probably going to be frustrated when he watches this later. But, I mean, respect to the pedigree. You have to love it. You have to, you have to honor those who have helped get you there. On the roll now, the 100 horsepower Sport Cub. 160 or so feet, 155 is what looks like the, the judges are calling it. Yeah, it's Chad Wirtz in 984 Hotel. Pouring the power, 100 horsepower. Early rotation cost him about 50 feet there. Trying to translate that energy too early makes those main landing gear just stick a little harder. I want to point out also we're not imagining it. It is actually getting hotter. It's uh, 91 degrees Fahrenheit, 33 degrees centigrade. Jimmy O'Neill using the entire runway left to right, right to left. The competitor in him fully alive and well. His son's watching from the sidelines next to their O'Neill tent. Love to see it. So that's someone, I mean, you're talking about someone who's got 
multiple world and national titles. He's in, in motocross, Baja. He's traveled the country racing in Pro 2 off-road trucks. So, uh, Let's be know. honest. He has the life we wish we had. Well, uh, yeah, a lot of respect there for a lot of racing. He's, he had a, a career-ending injury and decided to become a pilot in 2016. So he's got 800-plus hours. 800 plus hours of flying already. Not bad, not bad at all. That's that's more hours than most than most pilots. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's a lot more than I have. I've been blessed to fly a lot, but I've not been able to fly as much as he has the last couple of years, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to it in some new backcountry areas. For those people who haven't heard it, we get to go move to Texas next week, so I'm going to be joining all the Central Texas flyers, of which Brandon Corn is representing here this weekend. Okay, there we go. Now just got to get hard on the brakes. You see that sticks full back to provide that aerodynamic braking. You will see some competitors dump the, uh, the flaps. Remove the flaps. I'm going to say dump the flaps. I think it sounds like they're lowering it, but removing them, that helps reduce the lift. Yep, they want to get the flaps up and out immediately. That's the way to talk about it. Put the flaps up. There you go. That's, that's the actual way to talk about it. Fighting this wind. Carrying a little extra energy is going to cost him 50, 75 feet. Touches down just before the 100 foot There, mark. see, we go with the with the flaps. Just want to point out that the I'm... The flap dumping. The yes. flap dumps. Dump the flaps. <laughs> I like it. No, but it, it is a reasonable term to use because you can dump the flaps up or down. And in this situation, dropping the flaps back into their up position allows... <laughs> dropping them up. You like that? Yeah, I see. Trying to help you out here. It allows them to reduce the amount of lift at that low speed and get heavier into the brakes. You're, you're trying to bail me out. You're just coming down with me. I'm just digging, brother. <laughs> digging in. Digging the flaps in now. We've got this S7. So there's Brian Moore. Brian's just making it look easy. Stopping shy of 145 feet. I've always been a big fan of the S7. I just think it's a, a beautiful design. I love that we see more and more of them on the circuit. And they, you know, I, they've got a lower top speed. We don't care about top speed here today, but I think that's something that makes them maybe a little less prevalent these days. Randy Schlitter, is it basically every aircraft he designed, I've flown a lot of them. I've, I've had an S-14, I've had, gosh, a bunch of them, probably five different of his airplanes that I've flown. I have been impressed as heck by every single one of them. Really docile characteristics, really lovely to fly. Here, Jimmy, in the S-20, no, the RAND's designed, just to be clear. Exactly. Experiencing the same thing. These beautiful, clean characteristics. You can feel the stall coming well before it does. And right here, if that it was a thumbs up, that was clean and clear and stopped in under 75 Woo! feet. <laughs> Speaking of excellent flying airplanes, flown by an excellent pilot. Love that paint design, too. The white wings, the yellow fuselage, and the black nose. Just sporty and racy as can be. Got a lot of cheers from the... Uh the crowd here on that one. That was a good one. Our camera operators are pretty happy about it, too. <laughs> Setting up for another round as we're preparing. I, my mind just keeps going back to Swamp Stole and how cold it was, how the sleet felt and all of that, and all of the legend airplanes that were there. Having yeah. a massive flyout of legends, Moax joining us, nitrous and big engines and all kinds of craziness from the people at Legend Aviation. Just a huge, impressive array of the different types of airplanes they're putting out from their factory there in, I believe it's in Sulphur Springs, Texas. Well, and what's amazing about that is, you know, you think about Legend Aircraft, like they started with the Legend, right? The J3, like modernizing the J3. And now they've just variations on a theme of improving and improving, improving to something like the mother of all cubs. Right, just like so powerful, so capable in a slow flight situation. One of my favorite things is happening right now is our chief filmmaker, our head of production for the captured content side, Reese Dockhan, formerly of Disney, then Aviator Paramotor, now National Stoll and Aviator Paramotor, is moving our tent to keep the Wisconsinite and the Floridian cool. Life is good with a good team, guys. Couldn't be happier. And we're getting ready for our next round. The power is on. Southern California base pilot here for his first competition. He loves to make patches that say things like Super Stole. And today he is playing Super Stole in that beautiful aircraft. 
Love the sound of that. It's just aggressive. It's just what's and needed. And Yank oh. did it. There we go. See, every round, improvement, improvement, improvement. Which is why we are here indeed. Love seeing this Sport Cup take off. Again, the, just the classic, right? Just the Carbon Cub classic. It's classic My friend approach. Sean just bought one of these. Sean is an accomplished pilot. He flies for Hartzell out of Troy, Ohio, and he just bought a 100 horsepower Sport Cub, but he told me, he said, Eric, it's, it's actually a really impressive airplane. And I said, yeah, and then about a week later, he said, you know, Eric, I, I think I really need to buy a, a, a real big Carbon Cub, too. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian Moore not messing about at all in his takeoff. And now here look at look at how aggressive we are with our angle into the crosswind today. <laughs> Drop that right wing, get it away from the flags. It's gonna say get it away from us. <laughs> hey, there's nothing like looking down the barrel of a loaded airplane, right? Looks like I've got a little bit of time just to remind folks of some of our other sponsors. First, we gotta talk, keep talking about it. Yuma International Airport. Can't thank them enough. Obviously, we are in the shadow of what they're, like, underneath everything that they're doing here and them allowing us to be here and do that. It's just so important. We really appreciate that. They're really a big fan of their community. They work really hard. And I just have to say, Yuma International Airport's a class act. Great service, great timing. If you want to fly into this area of Arizona, look no further than Yuma International. And we already talked. We just saw O'Neill. We did take off, but O'Neill USA got to thank them. Look for our food trucks tomorrow. Load them up. Fri load them up, fries. Load I, them up. I love that it says food truck loaded fries. Self-explanatory. It does. That's all they seem sent over for us to say. Uh, Mariscos El Mirador will be here. Skydive San Luis will be here. Quail Corp. Can't Ooh, thank them early. enough. Very early there. Coco Pa Resort and Casino. Again, just you can see it from here. We could see Coca Pie, and we may end up having to go over there. I mean, there's all this extra dust to uh, to spend in the uh, casino this weekend. <laughs> it's it is dusty. Are you looking to win win yourself a new legend Moac? I would love go a over there and uh, bet it all on red and see what you can do. I'm, I'm here to tell you, man. Watching some of these airplanes and how they're performing, those legends at Swamp Stole was so exceptional, and right now. Oh, it's early. If you've been able to get the power in just a touch earlier, add a little bit more elevator, and keep the mains off the ground, I think we would have seen our best landing yet in this Sport Cup. Talk to me a little bit, Eric, about tomorrow. So things will be a little different. We'll have aircraft will be grouped in classes competing against, against each other. You know, one thing we're noticing today, obviously the heat is an issue, the dust is an issue, uh, but the other thing is the wind is so variable. And I'm wondering about what your thoughts are in terms of we have classes that might go when it's really windy. We have other classes that might go when it's like right now where we have not nothing, but there's less wind. Correct. So what we're experiencing is really kind of cool. This is kind of the beginning of a new phase in national stole history. Over the off season, our illustrious team of what we, what we call them, the, the Rules Committee, all right? Mm -hmm. I was trying to think of a cooler name, but our Rules Committee, some of our more experienced pilots came together along with our co-founder, Tom Flannery, and we looked at the data. We looked at all the data that we had from the years of competitions, all the different events that we've done. And by the way, guys, before I go on further, I want to say that right now, Jimmy O'Neill's on low approach, and the wind has shifted once again at 90 degrees. This is what happened last time, right before we saw a dust devil come right through. So keep your eyes on his wings as he's keeping them incredibly level despite this 10, 15, now closer to 20 knot left crosswind. Right tire touching first, heavy under braking, using the width of the runway to his advantage and stopping at 140 feet. Exceptional that flying. Was, that was incredible. And I think that that is the biggest takeaway too. You know, I remember learning... Uh, when I was learning to fly, there it comes. You were right. Here it comes. You felt it shift, and now here it's coming at our backs. Ways you know I'm a paramotor pilot. <laughs> well, that's true. I suppose that you're a little more in tune to it than that. You know, the I remember my flight instructor saying, like, what are you going to do if in the J3 you, you take off? Maybe you shouldn't have, and the wind starts blowing the wrong way, and, it you know, it's like 30 knots on the nose. What are you going to do if it's a 90-degree crosswind? I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. And he's like, well, just land the wrong, like sideways on the runway. You got enough room in a cup. I've done it. Like I've that. done it. Thinking about that sort of pilotage, 
right? That's what makes this sort of flying special. Well, and it's more than just thinking about that sort of pilot. It's just thinking in aviation, there's, there's zero room for hope in aviation. You can't hope things are going to turn out. You plan and you project and you understand what you're going to do in every situation because when you're in that moment as a pilot in that cockpit, the great equalizer, the cockpit, right, mm -hmm. you are in command of your own experience. So in that situation, you can't be forced to think, well, the runway goes this way and that way, so I have to go this way and that way. You have to think right. through what keeps you safe, and that's what these pilots are doing today. Now you see, now we're using again the full scope of the runway there. Now to jump back to tomorrow, we looked at all the data of all the different types of aircraft, and we were able to group airplanes before we grouped them just based upon their weight and the weight they could carry. Now we group them a little more interestingly based upon the historical results that we've seen from these class of airplanes. So airplanes are now grouped together to create the most intentional competition. So we want to see airplanes that are going to be scored not 150, 250 feet apart, but six feet, six inches. We want these airplanes to be challenging, or these pilots to be challenging each other with scores that are so similar, it makes it just that much more fun to watch. Into the power and away he goes. Tomorrow morning we'll be flying first thing. We'll have our first round starts at 10.30 and we'll be doing two rounds, weather allowing, giving us six total runs per pilot. Much like we're seeing here today, lots of runs, lots of experience, lots of opportunity to improve. I mean, the other thing I want to mention, it's hot, it's windy. Some of these guys have been practicing for a long time now. It has been a couple goodness, hours. Two hours. Yeah. That means you and I haven't shut up in almost two hours. Wow. It's impressive. I haven't run out of words. I mean, you've had to use kerfluffle. Well, but that was mostly just a flex. <laughs> Overhead now, we've got a C 130 Ooh. just making its way to Air Station Yuma. Apparently, this weekend is going to be one of the busiest weekends in marine aviation with over 80 aircraft in the air at any given time, F 35s, etc. Big bounce inbound. There Looks she like is. A scratch. The aggression is real. He really wants to get the best score possible. And he's been flying all day today. He practiced for at least two hours this morning and two hours yesterday. It's a lot of av gas. Hey, man, it's cheaper here in Arizona than where he comes from in California. I suppose so. Just across the border. Nice, low approach here. I like the stabilization. It was really clean. Came off the power a little early, and you see I'm starting to cross that center line, trying to use the drag of the additional headwind. But it's not going to work for me today with the scratch. The other thing we saw there was the, the upwind le gear leg start to come into the air a little bit and corrected that really, really quickly. That can make your day go sideways pretty quickly if you're not on top of it. That, was that a dad joke I just heard? Yeah, that was a dad joke. <laughs> All right, day going sideways. Ground loop jokes are us, guys. We've got a carbon cub. Beautiful sport cub coming in, little bounce and a okay. bit early again to listen to the power. He brought the power back in, got it back into control, dropping that left wing in to the crosswind exactly as you should, guys. We don't want to see a pilot to do this oscillation. We don't want to see any porpoising. We want to see that level of willingness to give up the score to remain safe and looking clean. I don't know what it was. Maybe I'm giving away a little bit too much about my cub time, but whenever I would do that and then have to do that, I'm pointing at different parts of the runway here. Whenever I would bounce like that and then have to give it some throttle and nurse it back down, it always felt so cool. It does. Well, and a big part of that for me in a Cub in particular is the bungee gear and the way that bungees absorb energy differently than shocks or spring gear. The bungee really is not as forgiving, right? That bungee, you really have to completely unload it before you can reload it in that nice, smooth way, right? You're a J3 pilot. You understand what I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, the problem is that uh, the, the pilot is more about the pilot than the plane. It is. It certainly <laughs> the first it comes time, to me, the, the mistakes I was making. The first time I flew a carbon cub, I was with, uh, with the boys, the, the Flying Cowboys out in Salt Lake. And I'm in the airplane with Jason, and, and we come in for a landing, and we dropped it out of the sky from probably six, seven feet high. And I thought we were going to go 30 feet back in the air. It was the first time I'd ever flown on big shocks and 35-inch, you know, Alaskan bush wheels. Sure. 
And no, we didn't bounce 35 feet back in the air. We stuck. And I was flabbergasted and immediately went home and ordered my own set of shocks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how can you argue with, the, with that? It's an incredibly different experience that these backcountry birds purpose-built for this can bring to you. Starting to build a little bit of a story for tomorrow. What do you think about the matchup between Brian Moore? This is sport class. Brian Moore in the Courier, the blue and black and white Courier, and Jimmy O'Neill in the S20 Raven. What do you think of that matchup? I think it's going to be very interesting. I think it's really going to come down not so much to pilot or to plane performance but as pilot performance. Either of those airplanes could easily take it. Either of those pilots could easily take it. It's going to be a question of who's in the right frame of mind, who gets the right wind gust, and who's just a little more prepared. I don't think I'm allowed to put money on anything. As the I think we should. We're across from a, from a casino. Let's do it. I mean, I feel like I, I'm, I feel like my money right now, based on practice, which isn't really a good signifier, but I think I might be. Maybe you should be Team Jimmy O'Neill, and I'll be Team Brian Moore. I'm with it on that. I, I think my boy Jimmy is not only going to take it, but he's going to smash it by at least 50 feet. That's aggressive. I think Brian is going to lean in on his stuntman heritage and experience. He's got no fear. You can't argue with a man that has no fear. Well, he's a better man than me. Then. <laughs> I'm sitting here watching these airplanes take off right at us and going, this is awesome. That beautiful Howl tune motor. Soon to be on the roll. Watch the tail come around just from the torque of the engine. I think he's given it everything she's got power wise and is just not trusting the lift early enough. I think he has at least 25 feet. I, I was going to say the same thing. It felt like it was uh, delayed, like he could have taken a riskier bite. 100% agree. We may see that bite right here in the Sport Cup. He's, he's just flying he, he didn't, it. He didn't need it. He didn't need a bite. He just floated right off. And I want to just, I don't know if any of the cameras can see it, but look at the, the pattern work, the C-130 pattern work off in the distance there at Yuma International. Guys, you might not think of Yuma, Arizona as home to Aviation Mecca, but right now for us, we've got stole planes. You're yanking and baking off the ground. I'm just saying, look at him go. And behind him, we got C-130s on approach, but that's all right. Here's my man, Jimmy O'Neill. Well, Jimmy's going to try to take the tent off of the top of us, it looks like. Hey, he can have the tent as long as he gets me that win by 50 feet tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Hyper aggressive. Looks amazing though. Wow. And off the oh, ground wow, preset. Look at that. <laughs> <Feet. laughs> All right, you won that one. All right, just by a nose. We've got about uh he's he can he can only has to win the landing by 20 or so feet. That's uh that's that's good for you, Jimmy. We got this, brother. So we've got some people again. I just want to keep thanking people because I am so incredibly grateful to be here. And uh, all of us at National Stole are just so grateful to be able to do this. It's kind of a crazy thing. It that really we get is. To do. It's it's a it's kind of a dream job. Duke Propeller, FlightHelmet.com, Lift Aviation with the, with the shoes, Sarasota Avionics with the with the prizes, USA Trailer Direct with the trailer. Oh my gosh, this trailer is insane, isn't it? Rugged Radios. We're talking about them. Flying Eyes, Flight Outfitters with the with the prizes for the first through third class winners. Air Tech Coatings, Committee Coffee. What a cool idea, right? Oh my gosh, the coffee's so good, too. All these folks helping us bring it together. Ooh, across the line. Ooh, he's not across the line. No, definitely, definitely not across the line. That parallax effect today is, a, is real. It looked to me from my angle. I was like, oh, I think he's got it made. It's all right, all part of the practice experience. How hot, how much hotter is it in that aircraft with the black paint than, uh, I, it looks to me like his windows are a little tinted, but probably uh, helps. Yeah, it does look a bit warm. Nice stabilized approach. I will say, after all of these years announcing for National Stole, we just got a brand new sound system for our crowd, and I love it. But it's super weird because for the first time we can hear ourselves. We can hear ourselves. <laughs> we'll go around in progress here again. Just a safety issue, like making sure to keep the good separation between people. So the air bosses call and say, my friend, please go around. I don't know if they're that polite. They're probably very matter of fact. Go around. 
What I love about it is these pilots, not only do they have air bosses there to help keep them safe, to help to direct and to be their extra sets of eyes, but in the briefings, we discuss it. We, we discuss that this is a normal action, right? At your normal airport, the airport you operate out of every day, making the decision to go around is oftentimes the very safest decision. So watching these pilots exercise great judgment, it's fantastic. Floating it across for you, he's going to have to get it down early, or that 50 feet bet is off. Yeah, that's not helping me right now, but it's just practice, buddy. Just practice. Just All right. Practice. We'll have to let him know the stakes tomorrow. Yeah. Jimmy, my, don't my. let me down. So here's Jimmy now, low and to the right. Lo I love the, I don't, does it make me too much of an av geek to say, like, I love the way the gear droop, <laughs> like the, the landing gear drooping in such an interesting way. I just love it. It's like potential, right? You're like untapped potential just hanging in the air. Untapped nitrogen filled potential of those shocks. Oh, it is a scratch. scratch. So technically, you won. I won this one. <laughs> But look how short, but look how incredibly short that was. That's fantastic. Great performance. I love the cowling shape on that airplane. That's what I was saying. It's just, it's, I would love, I got to talk to him tonight about it. Well, he offered to let us fly it. So let's, let's go borrow it today and uh, try not to bend it. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe after the competition. <laughs> after the competition. I don't want to be responsible for that. <laughs> Corey Robbins here, and he's always good for a flight. Down there in I, I, Corey, can I? Can you take me up, Corey? Heck yeah, man! Ghost down I, there on its thirty fives. I think we're gonna have Corey in my seat tomorrow, so we can get some love fabulous that, yeah. pro level commentary from one of the greats. Stole drag winner. That's right, Corey Robin. This sport cub is the epitome of what foundational, you know original Piper feel an airplane. I just, I love the fact that it's painted this way. Yeah. I love the fact that it's just such a nod to nostalgia. You got to have that lightning bolt. Chad Wirtz there from, he's, he's from San Jose. That's a good long flight in a, in a sport cub. Putting in work. I hope our cameras are capturing the C-130s <laughs> just doing pattern work here in Yuma. Hopefully we get another flyby of the F-35s. This is a great day. Looks like our Cessna 182, that 550 powered 182 is making its way back down the runway. See if he's come to join us. I know he signed the waiver. Jonathan Staines, the founder of Outlaw Stoll, before National Stoll stepped in to help out. He and his family live right here in beautiful Yuma, surrounded by mountains and Mexico. It's incredible how close we are to Mexico. It's, uh, you know, driving here from San Diego this, this morning. I mean, there's moments where I felt like I could reach out and touch the border. Like, we're that, I mean, just want to, for people at home, like, we are literally, we're basically in Mexico. Yeah, if, if you haven't ever looked at where it is, pull up Google Maps, take some time. I promise it's worth it to go, what? Mexico's on that side and that side and that side? Yeah, we're kind of <laughs> surrounded by Mexico here, It's and it's... Uh, yeah, it's just an amazing place to be. The the sand dunes. The, oh the man, dunes you got to drive in, through Glamis. Yeah, just like beautiful, and the mountain mountain pass. Driving through that from San Diego is just be, it's just beautiful. I mean, from Wisconsin, uh, you know, uh, nothing can compete with uh, cheese curds. I was going to say the corn the corn fields. You know, in the <laughs> middle of the summer, right? You're flying over all the fields, the trees, fall colors. But having some like real terrain. Listen to the 550 eat. Jonathan Staines on the roll. This beautiful drop zone built. Rotates early. He's off the ground around 200. Maintains it. Exceptional flying there from Jonathan Staines. Yeah, again, and with the heavies, right? You have to do that whole easing the nose back down, keeping it right on the edge so it doesn't sink too far, but you still build your speed up while you're in ground effect. The power to weight ratio does hit different, but even the 550, it's a heavy, heavy airplane. Should we, do, are closed. should we do a little bit of uh, flight instruction 101? And I'm wondering if I can, because you are, you are you teach people to fly paramotors. I do, and I used to teach people to fly fixed-wing ultralights, too. Okay. I actually just found my very first ultra uh, flight instructor certificate from 2002. Wow. I was like, man, I'm, I'm getting old. So I'm wondering, would you could you explain it, because I think you'll explain it better than I would. When we're talking about ground effect... 
That was impressive. That was impressive. By far his best takeoff, just past 110 feet. Yeah. He's going to be the... Oh, by the way, look at that. F-16 on a heater. So we were just talking about the Cessna, saying like keeping it in ground effect. I'm wondering if you could explain that for the viewers at home, when we, what we mean when we say that. So, excellent question. I love that you threw this to me. Now I have to do a good job with it. Thanks you don't for have that. to do that good of a job with it. So the idea being that the ground effect or the warmer... Ooh. Once again, a little stutter there from the engine. The warmer air closer to the ground gives a cushioned feeling, which would allow for more lift for the wings as they are close to the ground. That's, that's kind of the direction I would go with it, I guess. I don't know if it makes sense. You could probably science it up for me. I could science it up for let's, you. Let's science it up. Here, here comes the Wikipedia answer, guys. Wikipedia. It's, always, it's one of those things that makes sense once you fly. Something... Another F-16. Oh, T-38. Yeah, it was not an F-16. T-38 over flying right now. Could be an F-5. That'd be cool. Looks like a T-38 with tip tanks. And it looks like there's something out there just floating. It could be a V-22 Osprey just to the left of that T-38 smoke trail. Oh, yeah. I see it. Okay, let's talk about aerodynamics. Do you want to hear, like, the Wikipedia definition? Because you're pretty close. <laughs> the fixed wing air for fixed wing aircraft, ground effect is the reduced aerodynamic drag that an aircraft's wings generate when they're close to the ground. Jonathan's good, right on the line and heavy on the brakes. There's small contact patches with the standard tires hurting him there as he stops around 425 feet. So functionally. I guess the way I think of ground effect and flight instructors in the you know in social watching this whatever can say say I'm wrong, but I think it's just like the airplane doesn't have to work as hard to stay in the air when it's within that kind of like close distance to the ground. You know, it's funny because with paramotors, our wings are so high above us, we don't really experience the effects of ground effect. Oh, interesting. So you do, but you're not a yeah, wing. You as a person do for sure, but you can't feel it. Uh, so it's definitely a different experience. When you ask that question, I actually kind of flinch because I mean, I haven't talked about ground effect with a student in so long because our wings are 20 feet above our head. And I think the uh, let me dig. I think there's actually a distance. Yeah, half the length of the wingspan is when this happens. Correct. So you're way above? Well above. You're well above that with, <laughs> with the paramotor. It's all right, though. I love being humbled. Here we are now with that beautiful white Rans S7 on approach. <clears throat> nice, clean landing for our Cetabria. By far the best takeoff last run. Let's see if we can get a combined score. Can he keep it over the line? It is over the nice. line. Okay. Heavy under braking, stopping around 160 feet. Again, guys, these conditions not optimal for world records, etc., but very, very normal for what you might experience in the actual backcountry. Looking at the forecast for tomorrow, and you know the the TAFs are not yet showing anything too dramatically different than today. I'm going to have to get Jeff some lessons tonight about keeping it over the line so I can win my bets. <laughs> <laughs> Oop, we got to go around. I'd like to see it, guys. Again, exercising safe piloting. Plus, we get to hear an airplane power up, and that's always fun. It's great to see airplanes in the air. I mean, I, I think the big thing that when you think about this sort of thing is we've got airplanes of different speeds right now in practice when in when they're grouped together in their classes it'll be closer but for instance we've you were talking about justin tisdale before in his zenith that's a slow plane it's a very slow plane that's one of the things that we put a lot of work into from a safety aspect our air bosses and our entire team is constantly monitoring what good safe speeds would be for our downwind legs to ensure that there isn't too much bunching up of aircraft. That's why you see the 182 in the lead now, where before we had the Cetabria. Cetabria was the fastest cruise speed on the back, back straight, now the 182 carrying that, that leader role. We'll consistently see that because we don't want to have any aircraft overtaking 
in any position on this airfield. Waiting and waiting as this Sport Cub makes his way back around. He's now turning base. The summer heat starting up here in Yuma. I've been told that no one's allowed to go outside after May 1st, so we made it just in time. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I remember one year, many years ago, about 20 years ago, I was in Phoenix, and they closed the international airport because the airplanes were sinking into the taxiway. That's a problem. 128 degrees. That is, uh, that is a big problem. And I'll point out, that's three hours north of here. That is, yeah, that's uh, upsetting. <laughs> upsetting is a great way to you describe it. You know, I want, I, here's what I'm a, can I share a fear that I have right Melting now? Melting into the runway? No, I, my fear is that we are in the desert and there are things in the desert that I don't like. Creepy crawly things? Yeah, like, like scorpions and snakes and stuff. They're friendly though. Are they? I mean, they could be. I don't know. Here we go. Sorry. Scorpion talk. Scorpion Talk 101, it's a scratch. It's a scorpion scratch. If it was a scorpion scratch, it'd be a Dan Reynolds strat scratch because you could feel like, like the, you know, a little tip over scratch. <laughs> yeah, that at Sun and Fun was really incredible watching Dan Reynolds land basically in the less than the length of his airplane. Exactly. It's, it's just remarkable to consider what these airplanes are capable of today. All the way up to the 182 that we see taxi and bias now. Airplane is a work airplane. It is operated out of the drop zone, just a couple of miles south of here, on the border of Mexico. And Jonathan has a, a, an absolute love for all things aviation. He is a fixed wing pilot. He's a military f a free fall instructor, one of 850 ever to be named. At least that's the data he gave me. Wow. He recently became a paramotor pilot. Excellent. He is a tandem master. He is a drop zone owner. And he's the founder of Outlaw Stole, which now National Stole gets to be a part of. And it's an honor to be here in Yuma. You know, if I, journey. if I wasn't flying to Sedona on Sunday, maybe I should go, maybe if that falls through, I should go skydiving. I say absolutely yes. I've never done it. You got to do it at least once. My wife did it, and I, I was like, well, how was it? And she said, that. <laughs> Winds are favoring right now for Jonathan Stage. Oh, Quick almost. rotation. Almost grabbing the tail. Yeah, that almost shaved a little bit off of that uh, tail tie-down point. My wife said it wasn't scary at all. She just was like, oh, I'm here. And they're like, oh, I'm here. And I was like, that really? If that's her reaction, she, uh, she's got a pretty she's exceptional stoic. Persona personality. Exactly. Yeah. Stoicism are her. But <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you at home if you're watching. Don't mean to make fun. The, the video of it, it looks incredible. It's like she had a great time. On the roll, snatching it off the ground. Again, learning that balance point between pulling too early and dragging the mains along with the tailwheel or pulling too late and having excess energy. Love God. the sound of this, Rands. You can't help but say it every time he accelerates. Okay, now, look at that. That was, uh, what do you call that, 115? 115. You know, we're probably not this weekend going to see a six-foot takeoff based just on conditions. But if we take the conditions into account, we're going to have some really, really competitive scores tomorrow. I think we are indeed, especially when we see guys like this flying the sport club so, I don't want to say passively, but he's not aggressive. It's, he's making it look fluid. And that fluidity can translate not necessarily into the best scores, but into those most consistent scores, right? Is that like the uh, the Navy SEALs thing? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast? You know, it's really funny. My brother is a firearms instructor to the Navy SEALs. Okay. And he says, slow is slow. Do it fast. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Corn taxiing out, blowing the dust everywhere. Whoever lands next, it looks like Jonathan Staines will get a free paint treatment from the Corn Auto Body. Yeah, Corn Collision Center <laughs> aircraft Sand <facial>. blasting. <laughs> it's probably not the one he's looking for, but he could charge for it. That's Cessna 205 pumping out all the horsepower. Brandon said to me and at Swampstall, he said, I'm just 
need to dial in my landings. I've got the takeoffs. I've just got to dial in the landings. And seeing the progression he's made over the last year has been exceptional. I'm looking at the lineup of registered pilots right now for tomorrow and other people we haven't yet seen in practice but that are exciting to see. We've got Eric Saltzer in this Taylor Craft. Love to see a Taylor Craft compete in the rookie class. He's from Yuma, Arizona. Eric's actually the airport manager here, or one of them. Jonathan over the line, he's slow. It's long, but he's gonna translate a lot of the energy into the gear, get into those brakes. You can see the nose wheel almost shimmying under braking. By the way, my 172, the nose wheel is always shimmying under braking. Oh, uh, that's a 172 <laughs> thing. You might want to look into it, though. Usually an extra set of seals can fix that. I've had, I've had some doozies. We've, we've replaced that thing so many times. We should just make it, switch it to retracts or <laughs> Tailwheel. Tailwheel. There you go. <laughs> I'm also looking through here. Uh, I, oh, well, I'm curious what's happening with Glenn David and the Stole King. That, you know, early in the practice session, he had uh, some engine trouble, taxied off. Curious to see what happens with him by tomorrow. No update from the booth. Our producers are letting us know they're in the dark as well. We'll be hoping beyond hope that the incredible team here at Summerton Airport are able to put together what went wrong and get the Stole King back up and operational for our viewing pleasure tomorrow. And I just got word that Frank Knapp is going to be joining us. Not oh. sure which airplane he's flying, but he's a, a legend indeed of the Stoll community. Frank will be joining us for the experience tomorrow. As more and more competitors start filtering in, he is very slow. It's early. Darn. Frank Knapp, if you get a second, go into the Google machine. The Google machine. And type in Frank Knapp and... Lil Cub, Valdez champion. I think that year, like a 19-foot takeoff or it something. It was exceptional. Something, I, I don't know why 19 sticks out in my head, but just a truly impressive pilot, truly impressive aircraft he has there up in Alaska. I believe he's going to be in like a super legend here Well, that Arizona. would be fun to watch too. That was a phenomenal landing, one of his best. A little harder under braking. I think we could have seen a pretty exceptional result if this had been the full competition. Obviously, in practice, it's okay to just let it roll by. But one of the best landings we've seen yet in that cup. I'm getting tired of talking. How much longer are we going? We're laughing on the line as Brandon Korn is moving to it. Excited to watch this 205 with the flaps already down. Clearly electronic flaps there. He doesn't have time to pull the handle. Big that's a that's a huge that's a huge thing. Gotta have those manual flaps. We've seen the results difference between electric flaps and manual flaps be as much as a hundred feet in the lighter aircraft like the Cessna 150, just because being able to get the flaps in quickly changes the aerodynamic profile so significantly. Wait, do you mean dumping the flaps? Dumping the flaps, <laughs> that's the one, my friend. We've got a new competitor at Trace, Frank Knapp just registered, trying to push it up. Wanted to walk through, we, you mentioned it briefly, a little bit ago that the classes changed up and they were, they were changed up based on making things more competitive amongst aircraft. But I wanted to give a little bit of a an overview. Here's Brandon Korn now. Most aggressive wheelie in the West. That was good. That was that was a good thing. That was we should put good. that on social. Most aggressive wheelie in the West. That was good. Uh, <laughs> Take notes, team. Take notes. So, you know, Brandon... Or a friend here in the in the Cessna 180, that would be touring class. These are aircraft that are 
loud. These are aircraft that are loud. There's an even more aggressive wheelie. Whoa, he's dragging it. The uh, These are aircraft that are, the, sometimes you could call them the heavies, but there's other, in the mix are also the Malls or the Cessna 150s. Which Very are, are similar performance airplanes. Similar yeah. performance, but the 150s doing it as a small, less powerful airplane. Absolutely. But the numbers don't lie, and when we see numbers, there are always Whoa! will be outliers. Look at okay. that, guys. Feel that wind coming now. Big, strong what gust they've been pushing waiting through. For. You're going to see the Sport Cub begging to be released by the air bosses. If we occasionally sound muffled, it's because we keep having to put our gators on. Yeah, I'm just predicting the dust flying in. 18 knot gust right there, right down the pipe. It's starting to fade, but not before the Sport Cub is rotating. Coming off no, the ground. he's off super short this time. Looks like about 90 feet for the Sport Cub. So we also have, I think we've got the Citabria, the backcountry Citabria. That would be like backcountry class, right? So that's the Citabrias, the Huskies, Swamp Monster, if we ever see that. <laughs> <laughs> and also the Cessna 170s. And now oftentimes we have a big shootout of Cessna 170 Bravo models. So well, 170 Bravos and the Huskies are so similarly balanced the only time we see it change is when we see something like Austin Clemens with his reversing propeller. This new technology stolen from the seaplane world that uh, some of these stole pilots like to play with. I keep wondering if we'll see Brandon Corn show up with an MT prop one of these days because, you know, he wants that extra advantage. It's not a silver bullet, though, because it increases pilot workload. Not only does it increase pilot workload, but with airplanes like the 205 that are six cylinders instead of the four cylinder, they're required to keep the hydraulic pressure up so high. Not hydraulic pressure. What's the word I'm looking for? The, the engine pressure. I've lost the Manifold words. Pressure. Manifold pressure. Thank you. In order to make the prop actually turn to reverse, they have to carry additional power across the line. So in order to keep manifold pressure up, they have to add power, which adds speed. It's all a delicate dance. All elegance in the workflow. We have the adventure class this season. That's your Bear Hawks, but also your Carbon Cub EXs, the Dakota Super 18, the Legends. We, we've talked a lot about Legend aircraft and how they're almost in that class on their own sometimes. We also have like things like the, the Savage Outback Shock. Oh, it's okay. Big scratch with a shimmy on that right brake. Johnny got a little aggressive there. He was trying to bleed off his speed, and as he did, he just allowed it to drop a little too fast. I desperately want to fly that Shock Ultra. Have Do you seen you? this? Yes, I have. It's got like a 13 mile an hour stall speed. That sounds about right. It's insane. I would like to fly in one of those. So that's the adventure class. Sport class, you've got like, like today, we've got the Carbon Cub uh, S2. These are also the Rand's S7s, uh, lighter Taylor Crafts, Carbon Cub SS. Got some jet noise above us right now. Love to hear it. On approach, keeping the nose a little bit higher, a little more aggressive with the engine. It's across the line. If he gets heavy under braking, should be stopped by 135, 140 feet. Excellent work. Yeah, he's improving dramatically. Every, every pattern, he's improving very dramatically. It's incredible to watch the difference that a little bit of practice makes. And now, watching him <laughs> take off to reposition down the runway. Back on approach now. So here's that sport cub. I can't remember their names, I don't have the sheet. I'm mainly saying it's the right. Fighting the wind, but a strong breeze. If he can keep it across the line, he does keep it across the line, dumps the flaps heavy on the brakes. He, he, that's Chad Wirtz in the cockpit there, and he, he was kind of like, yeah, okay. I think Chad knows <laughs> that if he wanted to stop it, he could have put it down and locked him up for a 150 or less foot landing. So now he's in the same class as Brian Moore and Jimmy O'Neill, and then Justin Tisdale, who is, who's working on mechanical stuff right now. It's kind of the four of them tomorrow. I had initially written off Chad's Carbon Cub 
But now seeing him in practice today, improvement happening there too. So you've got Brian, Chad, and Jimmy all kind of, I, I think we're going to see really competitive it's scores be between a the three of them. It's going to be a shootout. What's really interesting to see is I think that a lot of people undervalue the this sport cup. Yes, it's only 100 horsepower. Wah, wah, wah. Guess what? That airplane was within 20 feet of 180 horsepower Carbon Cub SS at Swamp Stoll. Kelly Qualls the controls of the Sport Cub, you know, and others at the controls of the SSs. It's not just about the airplane. It's a lot about the pilot skill, the experience they have and the time they have in the airplane. A newer pilot or a new, less experienced pilot in their Carbon Cub SS is not competitive, but the two F-18s overflying us right now sure could be. That's a... Uh... That's a good sound. That's the sound of America, baby. I love it. <laughs> On the line now, Brandon Corn preparing to be released in the 205. Just, just waiting for F-18 traffic. Uh, the, there we go. Loud roar from him. MG prop. Taking a bite out of the air and rolling off the ground sub 200. You mentioned before that he said he's got the takeoffs dialed in, and I think he's right. Those he are really does. dialed in for him. He, he always gets the deck angle just right, so he's not scraping. Not quite. Sometimes he, he might grab a little mud. A little close. On the roll, out of the stage. There's the edge. There And there's the tail strike. He almost got it. I think he was just barely off the tail. But again, looking for that exact deck angle that allows him to maximize the angle of attack for the airfoil. Very aggressive, but very effective. Here's the Carbon Cub, Sport Cub S2 off the ground again so gracefully. You know, the... The other thing we have to talk about a little bit is the rookie class, new th new for this season, and uh, Eric's been talking a lot about Kelly Qualls from Swamp Stoll. Once you win the rookie class the way that Kelly did, you are a rookie no more. You can only enter that class once. Rookie class is a way for, it's optional, you don't have to be in the rookie class, you can enter in the class you want, but I think a lot of first-timers really like it because it's a relaxed class for all aircraft models and types. Um, I guess it's not like helicopters. Uh, <laughs> but basically, it's rules for the rookie class. They're relaxed, and they have a separate practice session ahead of the competition if they'd like. And they participate until they place first in that class. There's no prizes, no season points. just a relaxed way for them to get into the national stole community. The other thing you see is that the newcomers are educated by, I don't want to call them old timers, but the more experienced pilots, right? They take them under their wing really aggressively um, and say, hey, here's what we can do to improve. Here's what you can do to, to be safer and better. Here's Brandon Korn now. Brandon, with the best landing of the day, locking up the tires, he knows it's good. Yeah, he doesn't need to burn that much rubber if he doesn't want to. This may be the best landing we've ever seen from Brandon with around a 200-foot stopping point. Truly exceptional for a Cessna 205. Guys, that is a heavy aircraft designed to load up your family, your hunting gear, your camping gear, the dog, maybe a 55-gallon drum of oil, and fly it all into the backcountry. Absolutely incredible. I don't know anyone who wouldn't be happy with that landing. So that thing is the 205 was introduced in 1962. Six seats. Think about that. Think about how big a car with six seats is. Right. Six seats. And uh, you mentioned a uh, huge engine up front. Ooh, another great landing. The, uh, the original 205s had... 260 horsepower Continental uh, IO 470s, and that line of aircraft, you know, I think we a lot of people know the 206. Just bigger and bigger and bigger. There's pressurized models. You see the this aircraft is so big and can carry so much fuel. You see it used in world rounding attempts often. People fly all the way around the world. And it's just a big plane. Absolutely exceptional performance for 200 foot lane. I'm just blown away. No, I mean, like, let's max takeoff weight of 3,600 pounds. 
<laughs> so, I mean, it's not filled up to the brim right now. No, but he also, he keeps the airplane in a, in a condition he, he would actually want to fly it in. So there's an interior in that airplane. There's a full avionics suite. You know, it's a nice, nice airplane. Oh, dragging the tail. Okay. It's a scratch. This gentleman has worked so hard for hours now. He's going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> We're going to sleep well tonight once we get the dust off. Since we're doing a little uh, little Av Geek nerd out about the 205, uh, 206, slightly different. Uh, but, I mean, empty weight of 2,176 pounds. Maybe that's the better way to talk about it. You've got something that weighs over 2,000 pounds coming in it's and landing. It's a ton landing. of weight. It's just super heavy. It's a ton of weight. Have you guys at home figured out that we think it's a really heavy airplane? <laughs> uh, stall speed around 63 miles an hour. Cruise speed about 163 it's a pretty pretty good range there. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a working airplane. It is a working airplane for a working man. We love to see Brandon out here joining us all the way from Texas, as more and more families are joining us on the line. Probably people driving through town going, "What the heck is what going is on? What is happening at the airport?" Everyone over there watching, let's get a big wave over here. We'd love to see it. Thanks for coming out today, everybody. You got the right idea with those umbrellas, keeping the shade going on. 175 foot takeoff, give or take. I mean, let's just compare that for a moment to this beautiful carbon cup. That's not a fair comparison, but, but I, think I, understa I understand why. <laughs> I understand why you're doing it. Let's see what happens here. I just saw the shadow of the jet. What is it? More than one. We got three F-18s overhead, and we've got a Sport Cub on the roll, taking off around 150 feet. So, pretty darn comparable. Pretty darn close. Yeah, Brandon Corn's not messing around. Brandon is in it to win it this year, doing his best to make every event of the National Stole calendar. And if you haven't yet, check out, not check out nationalstole.com and look at our full event calendar. See where we might be coming to a state near you. Fun for the whole family. Especially fun for the Av Geek. <laughs> yeah, we're having it's. This is uh, these are my nerd weekends. This whole season, if you're just tuning in, want to send some gratitude the way of our sponsors. We've talked about them a bunch today, but let's talk about them again because we are so grateful for them. Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance, Aviation Protected. They've been with National Stole since the beginning. Legend Aircraft. Many pilots in the series flying Legend Aircraft. It's not your grandfather's cub, those Legend Aircraft. Duke Propeller, you're going to see it. Uh, if Hal makes it tomorrow, you're going to see it on his plane. Justin Tisdale, if his aircraft's not a mechanical, uh, you'll see him flying a Duke Propeller as well, designed in France, assembled in the USA. Flighthelmet.com. Flight helmets, flight helmets, flight helmets. Lots of flight helmet communication equipment and flight clo clothing. Lift Aviation USA. They're a new sponsor for National Stole this season. They love flying. It drives them to develop the best products. Brandon Korn now with an aggressive landing, letting it roll out. A little bit of a bounce there. Uh, back to Lift Aviation. <laughs> Maker of the coveted shoes. Everyone, everyone going nuts for the Lift Aviation shoes right now in the series. Sarasota Avionics, got to mention them. Long-term partner of National Stole. Providing a lot of the prizes, the Garmin watches, the Garmin inReach, USB charger for your panel. So clutch on those long cross countries. USA Trailers Direct made this amazing uh, trailer for National Stole, the broadcast trailer that has air conditioning that Eric and I do not regret, we regrettably do not have access to. Rugged radios, Eric's got one right next to him there. They've got a background in off roading and motorsports. But they're also uh, so rugged radio has definitely uh, been with National Soul for a long time. They keep every National Soul event running safely, efficiently, and accurately. Flying eyes, great sunglasses. That the big thing. You can make sure they don't mess with your A and R and your headset. And your, you had a great warranty. Come on, you got to remember great warranty. Yeah. Gotta, yeah, the <laughs> warranty. You know, here's the thing. When I say A and R, I'm talking about noise reduction. This is to instead of passive, it's active. It's removing the sound around you to make sure that you can hear in the cockpit. If you have a seal that's broken between your ear and the headset, it's not going to work as well. That's what Flying Eyes comes in. Flight Outfitters. Here's Brandon Corn taking off. 
super short. Always super short with Brandon Corn Flight Outfitters. That's the bags, the knee boards, the accessories, all these items, and now available. You've got the exclusive National Stole jacket, and uh, really excited to see that stuff. You've got a referral link you can check out uh, to get more uh, Flight Outfitters gear, and they've got prizes for the first through third place class winners this weekend. AirTech Coatings. AirTech Coatings makes paint fly. They got that wet look paint. Oh man. You, if you got to see, there's uh, the cub they built. Oh my gosh, with it's the, beautiful. With the t like teal and black paint. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, and then committee coffee. We've got to talk about committee coffee. Small batch coffee, accessible to everyone. Law enforcement officer owned. They're brand new sponsors here. And uh, use a coupon code STOLE when you make your purchase at committeecoffee.com. And ladies and gentlemen, it's just been a wonderful day of practice out here. As our pilots finish up their last round, we want to let you know that tomorrow we, be, we will be back and I will be able to enunciate. We've got F-35s in the distance doing vertical takeoffs and landings. And tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m., the live stream will kick off again and the flying will start officially, though there will be practice prior. Our pilots will have our safety briefing at 9 a.m. We'll be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and we'll be excited to share it all with you. Brandon Corn coming in for his last approach of the practice. Oh, we got some 35s, I think. Yes, sir, four, four F-35s. F-35s. Just up in the sky there. And, you know, before we wrap up, Eric, I'm just wondering if you had to summarize what you saw today in practice. Man, we saw some real improvement. I think that the biggest takeaway for all of these pilots, especially the rookie class guys who haven't done this before, who are getting new experiences and getting to drive themselves into just a, a new kind of awkward position. It's different to try something new. They have done an exceptional job. Here comes Brandon right now. Let's watch as he puts it right on the line. He's slow. It's good. It's good. Not the one he did last time, but here goes those brakes. He is loving the pavement because he knows he can stop faster here than anywhere else. And, the, and maybe, arguably, Trigear having a little bit of an advantage on the tarmac. I would say not arguably. Absolutely. Trigear does have an advantage, particularly in the stopping power. But overall today, guys, just exceptional performances from some great pilots. Everybody out here having a great time, even in the challenging conditions. Tomorrow promises to be a really exceptional day, particularly with late entrants like Frank Knapp. Frank Knapp. I mean, you. I would come, I don't know if I'm gushing too much. I would fly all the way to Summerton, Arizona, just to see Frank Knapp fly. Well, he's right behind you, so careful what you say. But that said, guys. Dear Frank, I love you so much, and I love... <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's going to be a great day. We'll see you right back here on all of our socials live at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time for National Stole Outlaw. Awesome, everybody. We'll see you soon. Cocopaw Casino and Resort. All the fun under the sun. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, I got that right turn. We're good. So, uh, meet up at the compound group up. I turn four. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good little driver. Straight on through.
When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting-edge technology, we offer a wide range of products. Whether it's for work, play, antique, or aerobatic, we have you covered. Remember, we make paint fly.